Bones on Morta, the Stat King, uh, and also uh, Ben's here. So yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Ben's here. Ben's here. Ben's here. He, he's sporting his new digs. Sporting yeah. those new digs. Those new we're talk- well, we're talking too. about the AFC East today, right? We're finally getting to fucking yeah. business tonight. It's about I like time. It. And you're repping hard. I see sh- uh, shirt and and jersey. You mean shirt and hat? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. Not shirt and, shirt, not shirt and jersey. I said Come on, shirt jersey. earlier. I mixed up the words, but you knew what I meant. I did. I did. What do you also? Yeah, but episode 5 man. Shit, I know so that we've done, a, we've done a lot more than that, but as far as, you know, recording for not 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 counting lives, episode 50, finally. What? How long? Has it been a year? Uh, over a year? Just Less over two a years year. Old? Just over a year? Yeah. Okay. Just over a year. Just a few weeks off here and there, but we've been pretty consistent. I got to give it up to us, man. Uh, yeah. This was this was started off as a, a D, an idea on Xbox Live and it came to fruition and us pushing it forward. And look at us now, episode fifty, man. Yeah, look we got our mics and headphones or headsets now, looking looking like a real podcast. <laughs> it took, it took me fifty episodes to to get a decent setup going. To get your sound uh, right, we're, we're here now. Got it right. We're here now. Yeah, we made it, Mama. We made it. But let's get into it, Roland. I know we we got the top running back list coming up. Last week we gave our quarterback list. Some controversy on yeah. Twitter. Um, one of our um, patroners our didn't like our list, and he called some of it out. And, who you know, who was being called out? What what uh what uh what I believe it was Ron's list. Well, yeah, he he left off uh, Russell Wilson, and some people were looking for uh, the masseuse god. Um, Watson, Watson, Watson <laughs> list, <laughs> which uh, you know, I, I think we talked about during the episode. Watson's I, I, down I and out right him, now, bro. I would have had him there um, if, if he was on the field, but because he definitely is like a top five, top ten talent. But uh, you know, he's not going to be on the, marks, right. on the field, and uh, you know, availability is your your best attribute. Sometimes uh, you got to be able to be on the field, and your your guys got to be able to count on you, especially at that quarterback position. But yeah, those, those lists are always fun, putting yourself out there. You know, you're going to get reactions. Where people want somebody a little bit higher, and I think we also said we're splitting hairs at the top five, top ten. It's a matter right. of preference at that point. So, yeah, everybody has their guys. They're saying Deshaun Watson's down and out at Texans camp, man, since the FBI got involved into his case recently. Oh, uh, that, like, he's on the sidelines by himself, like, not even with any trainers anymore, nothing, just, you know, observing. So he's he's pretty down and out right now is what – What's coming out of Texans camp? That's still I'm still seeing on the timeline. You still got those Bleacher Report notifications turned on for the Texans? Nah, it's some <laughs> of the it's it's some it's some of their beat writers and people that cover the team that yeah. I follow on Twitter. Wow. I don't go and follow people just because. <laughs> so at this point, why doesn't he just you know maybe the organization, the Texans organization, say stay home and get your because your maybe thing they correct. want. Maybe they, they want him to be humiliated because he wants out. I don't know, bro. Because and the they haven't put him on the exempt list yet. The easiest thing is just to keep him at home, but then you're kind of like egging the commissioner on to put him on the exempt list. You know what you, you like? Like Roland said, he's not on the list yet. So if he's not on the list, you know, have him around the team, even though he doesn't want to be there. You know, if he doesn't want to be fine, they they're having him there. It's, yeah. he, he's still on their time as long as he's on on the roster. I guess since he's still collecting that check from them, he has to show up how they want him. What what a situation to walk into as a head coach, though, right? Like you just walk in and your star guy that you just signed the prior year, probably not going to be able to play him or or use him. Uh, And you just walk into a complete shit show. There almost has to be an agreement with ownership that's like, hey, like you know no one's going to be able to win in this situation like these next one or two right, years right. especially it's, when it's you rebuild consider, their tank years yeah it's, especially you have when to you know their how uh, bill o'brien kind of screwed them over letting them or letting him be the gm you know that was kind of like the worst move of all time but uh neither here nor there and we already talked about the asc south so enough about that but yeah let, let's get into the running back list uh i, I like like doing these lists uh, especially like I said, we're splitting hairs at the top four or five, so it comes down to preference. And uh, there's going to be some familiar names from last year. I think last yeah. year our consensus number one was it uh, Christian McCaffrey. I think everybody it was has Christian CFP McCaffrey coming into the year. Yeah, and I think uh, that for right rightful reasons, he had just torn it up the year before, um, and you know he vindicated or uh, not vindicated, but 
I think Ben had him as a top wide receiver, and I mean, I, I can see why when he had over 100 uh, catches uh, the year prior. I think I had so. him number two, but I was yeah, he, No, you, you had, had him at the in bottom your of the list. list. Yeah, you had him oh, in your Oh, receivers. but it was at the bottom. You said I had yeah. him number one on receivers. No, I think no. it's said top 10. You had him like number 10 or something. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyways, uh, get, getting to the top 10, again, just like with the quarterback list, uh, we're going to keep in mind what these guys have done in the past. Uh, the, the year that they're coming off of in terms of injury, uh, their prior performance, again, uh, what we expect from them in the upcoming year. So you're going to see some guys probably towards the bottom of the list uh, that may not have been on a top 10 uh, somewhere uh, before. And it's mainly just because we're, we're anticipating a big year from the guy. But anyways, without further ado, just like the, the quarterback list, we're going to go one through 10. And I think number one, um, maybe on most – debate circles, I guess, or most uh, outlets that I've seen. There might be a little controversy with our number one, but um, three out of the four uh, members rated Derrick Henry as the uh, number one running back um, in, in all of football. Uh, ben was the lone holdout. He had Christian McCaffrey at number one. Um, I'll let him get into why he, he, he thought so, but just to give Derrick Henry his daps for what he did last year, uh, he rushed for 2,000, Mr. 2K. He had a 2,027 yards on 378 rushes. So the touches are up there. Second consecutive year that he's had over 300 touches. Just want to keep that in mind. 17 touchdowns. Uh, he was averaging 126 yards a game, 126.7. So round that up to 127. Uh, doesn't really offer you much on uh, in the front of receiving. He only had 100 receiving yards on uh, 19 catches. But nonetheless, King Henry – dominated the season if you had him in fantasy you kind of got him at a little bit of a discount for what he offered you uh, with the 2000 rushing yards uh, he's improved his rushing total um, every year since he's been in the league on an average of about 500 he's improved it by 500 yards each of the, each of the last three seasons uh, so definitely a guy that's trending upwards or had been trending upwards the past three years um ben or actually justin you had him rank number one uh let, let, let me hear it. Why is he your number one guy? Well, this is based on off what we saw of him last year. You know, he was that offense's number one option. He he let uh, their quarterback not have to make the plays so much because he was carrying the chains himself. I, I do believe we're going to see a drop in production, but what does a drop in production mean? It still means over 12, 1,300 yards, I think, in my opinion. So that still puts him at the top for me. I did think about what Christian McCaffrey brings to the table, you know, as far as being that receiver, like Ben said, but I couldn't put him there after knowing what he did last season and he was hurt for most of the season. New quarterback, new system as far as that goes. I, I just couldn't put him at one. I have to go Henry just based on last season. Justin, all the reasons you just gave are the reason to put Christian McCaffrey at number one. <clears throat> hey, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I had him number one last year. I have him number one again this year. And he got injured, but he was doing work before he got injured. Now you get in, you get in a new quarterback who is already a dump-off king and is going to be dumping it off more to not throw interceptions. Um, so you're going to get be getting those receptions. You said that you think Henry will rush for about 1,300 yards. I think we see McCaffrey around the same range, but the difference, like you said, receiving. I understand the injury hesitance. And I'm sure that Christian McCaffrey isn't too far behind Henry and y'all's list. But the the fact that he gives you the receiving and the rushing, you know, the rookie quarterback, he doesn't have Julio Jones and A.J. Brown lined up over there to, you know, hawk stuff from him. I think we're, it's going to be a big bounce back here from Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, and, you know, just to play a little devil's advocate, you know, um, Antonio, or A.J. Brown and Julio Jones being outside could open things up even more for King Henry. You're not going to be able to stack the box on these guys anymore, especially if Julio Jones can stay on the field and uh, be that perimeter threat that we all know him to be. Uh, the real, the thing that sticks out for me with Derrick Henry, and it's just he's that old school running back. I, I think Ben brings up a lot of good points for C-Mac as far as being uh, the running back of today, right? He's the guy that can do it all. He'll, he'll line up in the slot. He's a linebacker's nightmare um, coming out of the backfield as a receiver. I don't know a linebacker that can guard the guy. Uh, he runs he's that circle route fresh. to perfection. He's and gonna he's going to be, be fresh. fresh. But Derrick Henry, the thing that I love about him, and I got to give him the number one status just because he rushed for 2,000 yards last year, 
And it's, you can't bring the guy down on the first contact. We, we've seen many guys try and many guys fail. I uh, just pulled up a little stat right here. Uh, he ha In the last two seasons, he has over 3,000 yards um, after contact rushing. That's a, that's an insane stat. How? I mean, he, he's not the he's not the shifty guy. He's not going to juke you out of your shoes. But man, good luck bringing him down. Um, it, it usually takes a game tackle. Uh, but yeah, that's that's Derrick Henry um, at number one. Anything else you guys want to add uh, before we move on down? No. Nope. All right. Well, without further ado, uh, it's the guy that Ben uh, had ranked at number one. It's uh, Christian McCaffrey. Um, arguably, like we said, the most complete back in the league. Uh, over the past uh, couple of seasons since he's been in the league, he's seen 388 targets, and he's only dropped nine of them. That's an insane, insane stat for a running back uh, to be that efficient out of the backfield as a receiver. Uh, ben, you want to tell us a little bit more about why you have him number one? Yeah, I mean, like I said, the, the dual threatness. I know dual threat is more of a quarterback uh, term for, you know, scrambling and throwing, but – his pass catching and his running out of the backfield. I mean, he's the best player on that offense. The offense is going to go through them. He's going to be healthy. I mean, I think barring another injury, there's no way that he busts. Do you see um, another just, 1K, 1K a year for him? Uh, easily. 1,000 rushing yards, 1,000 receiving yards. I, I think as long as he's healthy, that's easy. And I know, I mean, it's a lot to ask for being healthy, but he hasn't been a running back who has had an injury, you know, riddled past. He's been – pretty healthy for the most part of his career. And it hasn't been too long, but last year was his first major injury. He's not a guy that, you know, misses is guaranteed to miss two or three games every single year, because that's the way some of these running backs are. They take a lot of hits. Like you said, all those yards after contact for Derrick Henry. I mean, he had such a good season. I have him here at number two. I know uh, we, I just flip flopped with you all, but I have Henry at two just because I don't think that he can get better than last year. Um, can he repeat last year? I mean, that would be a hell of a that would be a hell of an achievement. But you got to think there's going to be a little bit of regression based off the historic season that he just had. More opportunities, you know, down on the goal line with AJ Brown and Julio Jones there, maybe to hawk a couple touchdowns from him. But you know, he's still going to be a beast, and he hasn't had one of those injuries, Roland. So for for a guy that takes as many hits, I mean, we know he's built like a like a fucking Clydesdale horse, but He's he's escaped that injury thing, and you got to think. I mean, that's a position that doesn't have that long of a lifespan. I'm not. Yeah. I'm just no, saying. I, I wonder I mean, if he becomes a victim. To and you that. do the you do the math. I mean, he had 303 touches uh, the year before last, and he had 378 touches this past year. That's 681 uh, touches in the past two years. That not a lot that's of guys crazy. can sustain that. You know, the other guy that's on that trajectory is Zeke. You know, you talk about him and the t amount of touches that he had coming out of the league. And uh, you might be seeing some of that slowdown happening or maybe it was happening last year. Who knows? We'll get into that later. But uh, you, you bring up a valid point, Ben. Uh, there's a lot of wear and tear on Derrick Henry. Uh, the good thing is, though, he's still relatively young. He, I mean, he might be getting up there in terms of his running back age. They age a little bit differently um, at that position. But he's avoided injury, so... Let, Guy's a freak. We, we see his yeah. workout videos, and, and they're amazing, man. Freak it's, nature. And, it's and ridiculous how you can be that, that like, big pause and be a, an NFL running back and be that effective. Like, breakout runs yeah. we see him have late in games even. Yeah, he gets better as the game goes on, for He's sure. Uh, but just <laughs> uh, one more thing on, on CMC, Justin. Uh, do you see another 1K, a 1K season for him? Um, this cup, upcoming season, considering the new quarterback and everything that they have going on there in uh, Carolina, because you had him right number two, also. Yeah, so that's just dependent to me on Mike Davis. He got a lot of the carries when CMC was out. Uh, is he still with the team? I'm not sure with if he Falcons. is. I could see some of the, okay, but in that case, I have no problem with uh, but Justin doesn't have CMC that. yet, too. Who did he have? I'm sorry, maybe I was misreading it. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. Two. Well, that's a good transition point because uh, we just talked about uh, uh, Derrick Henry being a back that's avoided injury for much of his career. This next running back, we have him ranked number three, hasn't been so fortunate throughout his career. He may have broken through that curse here this last season when a knock on wood for anybody who might be taking him in fantasy. That's uh, none other than Dalvin Cook uh, from the Minnesota Vikings. He is the number three running back on our rankings. It was pretty close between him and Kamara. 
as you can see the the rankings that we have up there between the four of us uh just to give dalvin cook his props uh he rushed the ball for over 1500 yards last year uh he had let's see here how many touchdowns he had 16 touchdowns so he he hit pay dirt a lot for you he had 44 catches for 360 yards and he pitched in for a touchdown uh dalvin cook he, he does a lot of work for that team but he doesn't have the best offensive line and he's a guy just like we talked about with derrick henry that can uh, bust a long run dalvin cook is good for a couple of 70 yarders each season um, and he's proven to do so uh, with a 70 yarder in each of the last three seasons um so i think justin you had him ranked number two uh, what, yeah. what's your what's your thought process behind that? Um, My thought process behind this stuff. is just the fact that every year he's played in the league, he's gotten statistically better. Uh, let's go from 2019 to 2020. Same amount of games started, same amount of games played, but he got 60 more attempts and also managed to get about 450 more yards. He's a five-yard average guy. Got into the end zone 16 times compared to 2019 at 13. And like you mentioned, broke off two 70-yard touchdowns. And then his receiving average did take a little bit of a dump uh, from 500 to 370. But uh, he's good with the ball, doesn't fumble a lot. And I expect not necessarily maybe more than 1,500s, but to be in that 1,300-plus range coming up this year. And I just think also with that extra game factored into it, with the Vikings offense relying on him a little more, um, I think I have him there at number two. I, I feel pretty comfortable with that. All right. What, what about you, Ben? At number three, I have Kamara. I have Alvin Kamara. Um, just like like a CMC type running back, you know, the versatility, uh, the fact that Drew Brees is gone. So you got to think it means more looks for him. Michael Thomas injured again to start the year. He's going to be missing times. I mean, Alvin Kamara is going to be the offense. Uh we still don't know if it's going to be Jameis Winston or Taysom Hill, but Taysom Hill did hawk some of his touchdowns last year uh, in, you know, on the goal line. I would have had Kamara rank, you know, possibly higher than than Derrick Henry just based on the fact that he gives it to you, you know, receiving and rushing. But I'm expect I have, I'm expecting big things from Kamara this year. You know, he already dealt with that injury season that's behind him. Um, what was that? Two seasons ago, Roland, because he had a yeah. he had a hell of a year last year. So he was running back one in fantasy last year. Yeah, he was running back one, and that was with Taysom Hill at quarterback for most of the season with Drew Brees out. I expect more of the same from Kamara this year. Yeah, um, just you know, going back real quick because I I do agree with you. I have Kamara as my number three, uh, but you know, Dalvin Cook here being ranked as the the consensus, I guess, the three for uh, we talking about sports. He's just more of a traditional running back um, than Kamara. He, he's a little bit more polished uh, running in between the tackles, not to take anything away from Kamara. That's just not his game um, as it compares to Dalvin Cook. And Dalvin Cook, I mean, for all intents and purposes, um, he – how can I say this? He, he's not doing it behind the best offensive line. If just to play devil's advocate, Alvin Kamara has one of the best offensive lines in football. Uh, in, in terms of how you rank them with the PFF grades and whatnot. And uh, the Vikings are kind of middle of the road. So Dalvin Cook does do a lot for that team. Um, I, I can see him ending up in, in the top three. I mean, fantasy-wise, he, I think he's ranked number two right now or number three. So um, definitely expecting big numbers out of him. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, just moving on to, to number four, it is Alvin Kamara. Um, Alvin Kamara, uh, the lead back for the Saints. Uh, he is a guy uh, kind of like um, – Christian McCaffrey, who can do it all. And I, I think in Christian McCaffrey's role, if he was on that team, getting those same type of uh, usage rates and stuff like that, I think Alvin Kamara could potentially put up the same kind of numbers as um, a Christian McCaffrey, although the numbers aren't that far off. Uh, rushing yards last year, he had 932 for 16 touchdowns. So he had 16 uh, uh, touchdowns on the ground, and then he's going to contribute on the uh, – as a receiver, he's had 80 receptions or 80 plus receptions each of the four years that he's played in the NFL. He had 83 catches last year for 756 yards and five touchdowns. Um, his average yards per game um, on the, the rushing end is 62. On the receiving, he's going to get you 50 yards a game. So, all purpose, he's over 100 yards already for you. Uh, he does it all. Uh, he didn't have the best quarterback situation last year, although it kind of played into um, his situation. Usage. 
Yeah, he was targeted 107 times. Um, so that just goes to say they weren't pushing the ball down the field too much down there. Uh, but total, 21 touchdowns, do it all back. Um, ben, you just talked a, a little bit about why you like Kamara. Uh, Justin, I don't see him up yet on your rankings. Um, yeah. What's up with that? There's a reason for that because when I look at the running back position, I look at the, the, the rushing stats first. And I look at Alvin Kamara's career, and you know what stands out to me the most? What's and that? I know it's partly to do with the style of offense that the Saints play. He hasn't hit 1,000 yards rushing. And you got year. Chubb here, in my opinion, with less games last season because he was hurt, about four or five games less, still broke 1,000 yards rushing. I, Kamara's a better utility than Chubb is, but I couldn't put Kamara over Chubb. Because of that. Okay, so I mean, you, you, you value the traditional running back a little bit more. Right, how many more getting. how many more total yards did Kamara? I'm sure Kamara had more total yards receiving and rushing than Chubb. Yeah, I think he did. Um because yeah. Hunt just steals everything from Chubb in the passing game. So Yeah, he doesn't even get looked at. Yeah, Chubb's only gonna get it through the ground. Um at four. I mean, I already spoke about Kamara and I just had him ranked over the number three guy on the list, Cook, just because of usage and the fact that Cook has always missed two or three games. You know, every season of his career, he's guaranteed to miss some time. It's just yeah. kind of chalk it up, put it on the board. You know, we're going to be without him for two or three of these games. Um, but you're splitting hairs like you all said. Yeah. I mean, this is the cream of the crop up here. Yes. Yeah, definitely, especially at the top five, it is cream of the crop because we all kind of have these guys in our top five. It's just a matter of where we have them. Preference. Ranked and preference and whatnot. So, you know, Kamara comes in at number four, uh, but number five is Justin's guy uh, at, with Nick Chubb. Uh, him and Ron uh, both ranked him at number four. Uh, Nick Chubb is that traditional uh, running back coming out of the University of Georgia. Um, I have his stats up here, like uh, Justin alluded to. He only played 12 games last year. He had 1,067 uh, rushing yards for 12 touchdowns. Should have been 13 touchdowns. If you had him in fantasy, he was a part of that epic. Um, at the end of the game, he, he ran it uh, for about 30 yards. It was going to be a touchdown. Then he just bowed oh. out right at the one-yard line. Oh, man, I the lost the game. game because of that. Oh, man, I'm sorry. I'll, I just did a moment of silence there for you, Justin. But I, that's, a, that's a rough beat right there. That's a rough oh, beat. Yeah. Got a lot of flack for that, kind of like uh, Todd Gurley did a couple of years ago. Anyways, uh, but also like uh, Ben was saying, he doesn't offer you much as a receiver. He only had 150 uh, receiving yards, but uh, the 1,067 uh, rushing yards in 12 games, that's good for about 90 rushing yards a game. Um, that follows up what he did in 2019, so two consecutive years um, over 1,000 yards. He does have um, a running back, two that kind of takes a little bit away from him in mm -hmm. Kareem Hunt, and a very talented running back, too, probably the most talented running back, too, out of um, all of football, if you really think about it. It's the best one to punch. Um, for, for all that it's worth. Um, I, I agree with Nick Chubb at five. I, I think that's a fair ranking for him. Um, ben, you had him all the way down at eight, and I see some of the names here on our list. I, I don't want to spoil anything that you have in front of him, but it, it's all because he doesn't offer you as much as a receiver. Well, I mean, I have your boy Zeke in front of him. That tells you as much as you need to know. We come out here with number, the number five ranked running back, right? We're at, yeah. And I have Zeke as my number five. I know that we'll get there. But, yeah, I don't have Chubb there just based off he gives you nothing in the passing game, and I think that Kareem Hunt's just a better running back than Nick, than Nick Chubb is. I know the numbers don't say that, but that's just based off opportunity. I think that, you know, when Nick Chubb didn't miss time, Kareem Hunt was the guy to have, bro. Kareem Hunt was doing it all. We saw what he did with the Chiefs. He just had that incident, and, and you know, he got, he, got sh he got shelved for a while. But I think as overall running back, I just think that, Kareem Hunt's more talented than Nick Chubb. I know I might be in the minority with that. That might be one of those takes that, like, where I think Jalen Brown's better than Tatum. This might be a, a good comparison to that, where I might just be off, but that's just my preference. But I have Nick Chubb in my top 10, but I just don't have him, you know, top five. Top five, you got to be able to do it all, uh, in my opinion. All right. All right. And what, would I, what if I were to tell you that Nick Chubb has more yards per reception than Kamara and Hunt. Well, yeah, but he has would it matter? 300 less receptions or what? Like, how no, many, I'm just how asking, would that matter to you at all? No, it wouldn't matter at all. Okay, he had just 100, wondering. 
150 receiving yards in the entire season. I mean, that's nothing. Yeah. Well, he, okay. he's, an, he's another guy, um, much like uh, Derrick Henry and why I have him at number five. He's just a hard tackle. He's a hard guy to bring down at uh, first contact. And another stat here, um, this is all courtesy of PFF. Um, in his first, um, or over the last two seasons, excuse me, the seasons that he's uh, really flourished, um, he has 488 carries. Out of those 488 carries, he has 124 broken tackles. I mean, that's a pr that's a pretty good rate. That's good for uh, in, like in the 20% range. I I'm not going to do the math right here, um, but it's it's right around that range. And he he's a tough tough tackle, especially for those defensive backs that we know don't like tackling. And he's out in that open field a lot. So um, a, a lot to see from Nick Chubb, but moving only, on. To, uh, only if the DBs had to worry about him catching swing routes, bro. But I mean, yep. that's, you ain't even got to worry about that. Yeah, and that's Chubb the thing too is uh, he. I don't know if you consider him a three down back because of the way that they they use those uh, running backs. Kareem Hunt and, is in there on third down every. I mean, but that's by committee. You know, there's no doubt that he. I think he could be a three down running back. Um, I don't know about still being a pass catcher, but. It, when you have Kareem Hunt there, you got to use him as your third down running back. And we'll see where his uh, stats end up because, uh, like Justin said, I think he has a good point. He only played a couple uh, 12, 12 games last year. Give him 17. Uh, he might very well end up around 1,600, 1,700 rushing yards. So uh, let's, let's see what happens this year for Nick Chubb. But moving on, uh, Ben already listed him on there, and I'll let him lead because he had him uh, ranked the highest. And that's Zeke Elliott. Zeke's coming off kind of a, a shaky year. Um, first year in two years that he didn't rush over a thousand, but he got pretty close. Uh, 979 rush yards. He did have his lowest rush yards per game at 65 uh, yards per game. That's a big drop off from 84. And that number's declined every year since he's come into the league. Um, he could be a victim of usage. He's had over 300 touches three out of the five years. Uh, that he's been in the league, but he does offer you something as a receiver. Um, it's not talked a lot about uh, with Zeke because he is such an efficient runner, but he is a pretty good receiver. Um, each of the last uh, three years, he's had over 50 catches, 77, 54, and 52, and he's pitched in for a couple of touchdowns each of those years. So uh, not really talked about a lot, but Zeke is a threat out of the backfield as a receiver. And I'm going to be the first before I throw it to Ben to say that I don't think he's going to lose too many touches to Pollard this year. I'm, I'm expecting a big year out of Zeke. I had him ranked at number six, but like I said, Ben, um, why do you have him ranked at, at number five? Usage. You use that word several times throughout your, your, you know, the way you teed it up for me, but usage, usage, usage. That's pretty much how I ranked my running back list is the opportunity, you know, in, in good situations. We're expecting the Cowboys to be a top 10 offense possibly top five offense. They even have potential to be the top offense in the division that they're in. So if you're giving me the running back for that team and a guy who we know that, you know, has gotten it done on the NFL level for several years, I know, uh, I think it was the other day, I don't know who it was, we were tripping out, but how many years Zeke has been in the league? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, a, he, he's, he's, he's a vet now. He's a vet. Yeah. He, he, he could be considered a vet now. I like the way that they're set up. I mean, they had that horrible year last year. And, you know, it wasn't – he had that fumbling problem. I expect him to fix that. It was a big – it was a big – Six uh, fumbles. Six yeah, fumbles. And, and it was a big reason for how you said Pollard was taking some carries from him. That was a big reason. But he's not putting the ball on the ground that much. And also the fact that they were stinking it up all last year. The you don't want to just – decimated. Yeah, you don't want to just throw Zeke out there to get killed. But I expect a big year from Zeke, a lot of usage. And I'm not even a Cowboys fan, so for me to have him here – it's because I really do believe yeah. that shit. And I'm glad you brought that up because uh, there are a couple of Cowboys fans on this podcast, and uh, one of them, um, not myself, because I had him ranked at six. You see him there already up on the board uh, where he ended up consensus. Uh, Justin, you had him ranked the lowest out of all of us. Um, are you buying the decline on Zeke, uh, the fact that he's had so much usage in his first couple of years in the league that you think uh, the best has already passed? No, that's not why I ranked him lower. I just had to look at Aaron Jones before Zeke. Very similar stats. The difference maker was the fumbles. Aaron Jones only had two fumbles last year. None were lost to the defense. They were both recovered. Zeke had six, and five of them were turnovers in the end. So that what was do you the expect difference maker. this year? What do you expect this year out of Man, he looks really good as far as what I've seen um, in practices from Hard Knocks. He looks like he's in shape. Um, I do lot. I do expect to, for him to get above that 1,000-yard rushing mark and to take care of the ball a little more. 
Uh, if that Cowboy offense does flow the way I think it should, um, I, I could see him ending up with uh, anywhere around 1,100, 1,200 yards. Okay. Like Fantasy-wise, he has, you know, for sure top five potential. He's for sure. Yeah. And, I mean, he could even be top three. I don't know if he can be the top running back, but – he, he has a lot of potential if he just lives up to it this season. Yeah, he just yeah. needs to adapt to be healthy. That, that helps him out a lot. But uh, moving on, a guy that his performance is also dependent on a quarterback, if you want to look at it that way, is um, Aaron Jones. And uh, that's uh, Justin's number six guy that he just got done uh, talking about why he liked uh, Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones, since 2020, had his uh, second consecutive 1,000-yard rushing season. He doesn't have as much usage on the ground. Um, he has had to battle off uh, Jamal Williams for the past couple of years. He's no longer there. He's on a different team. I don't have it at the at, at my fingertips right now. But Jamal Williams is no longer there, so it's a one man show. Still um, got AJ Dillon. AJ oh, Dillon. Oh, that's right. right. AJ Dillon. They drafted him out Boston of Boston College. College. There you go, yeah. Mr. Quads, uh, part two. And he was, uh, he's a horror. He's a workhorse running yeah. back, man. Um, so Aaron Jones, 1,100 rushing yards. Uh, like I said, the the usage isn't there. He only had 200 rushes. Uh, compared to the last couple of guys, we talked about getting about 300 touches on the ground. So his yards per uh, carry are up there. He has about five and a half yards per carry. That's the third time that he's done it in his four-year career. He's going to the fifth year of his career, and he's averaged five and a half uh, rushing yards uh, per attempt, uh, 5.2 for his career. So that's a pretty, 2019. Yeah, that's a pretty good number right there uh, to, to be able to boast about as a running back. Uh, he is pretty good as a receiver. Uh, he's been close to 50 the last two years in terms of receptions. He's coming at 49 and 47 uh, and a couple of touchdowns each of those years. And as ben, uh, Justin alluded to, he takes care of the ball. Um, three fumbles and two fumbles the last two years, six first career. And I didn't even bring up the one of the main stats. Uh, 16 touchdowns in 2019, nine last year. Uh, so he uh, gave you 11 total uh, touchdowns in 2020 uh, with two receiving. So, Justin, uh, you just said why you had Aaron Jones ranked so high. Uh, ben, uh, you have him right at the consensus. At, or, I have him at six. Yeah, you have him at six, excuse me. So uh, what do you like about Aaron Jones? Do you, do you I, expect a bigger year out of him this year? I. The only reason why it might not be a bigger year is just because when they get down to the goal line, this is a team that doesn't mind throwing that one, two-yard out or slant to Devontae Adams just to get that Rodgers touchdown to him. But, I mean, Aaron Jones is a definition of consistency, man. And he does it, you know, in the passing game, in the rushing game, quiet. This is the guy who will give you that quiet, you know, 100-yard game, kind of won't even notice it because Rodgers and Adams are stealing the show. Love the offense that he's in. Love the situation that he's in. I do see A.J. Dillon possibly getting some carries because he's a, that bigger back maybe down in the goal line. But Aaron Jones has been getting it done, and there, there's no reason to doubt the guy. He's a, I think he's an RB1 in fantasy football. I think you're comfortable having Aaron Jones as your running back one. I think it's a very good point. Uh, Justin, uh, do you have anything to add uh, to Aaron Jones? No, Ben pretty much covered it. Like he, like he did mention, though, you don't get to see all the time goal line action from him because you got Devontae Adams, one of the better route runners receivers in the league, and you got Aaron Rodgers, you know, top five quarterback, and that's the option first. They also have that uh, tight end that came on last year. Um, Tanya, Gary Tanya. Robert Tanyan, yeah. So. He hit double-digit touchdowns, didn't he, Tanyan? Gary Tanyan, right? Or yeah, Robert Tanyan? Like that. I think it's Robert Tanyan. And, you you know, I'm, I'm just looking at it right now. I didn't even see. I don't I don't have uh, Aaron Jones ranked number seven. I have him number eight, I think. I favored Saquon over him. And I think a lot of that is just because I believe a lot in Saquon's pure talent. Like when he's healthy, Saquon finds himself – in the, the top five for me when he's healthy, but he just he hasn't been healthy, and yeah. you, know, you, you got to was... discount it. So I, I discounted it, maybe not enough compared to where my colleagues. Uh, I don't even see Barkley on any of their Your lists. Peers, yet, so Your peers. My peers, excuse me, my friends. Man, my I was boys. trying to find a way to get Barkley out of my top ten. I bro. saw I saw you when you were editing it on the Google Doc. Uh, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit here uh, later on, but um, I think. We're not even getting to Saquon yet. So moving on to number eight, uh, let's go to a guy that was also injured last year, but um, he hasn't been injured as much, and his injuries haven't been as catastrophic, I think, as 
uh, Saquon. So I got to agree with you guys. There is Austin Eckler, Austin Eckler, excuse me, uh, the running back uh, for the Los Angeles Chargers. He's also another do it all back. Uh, he's going to be a threat out of the uh, the backfield as a receiver. And don't sleep on his his rushing prowess. He is a pretty good rusher out of the backfield. Um, and his uh, he hasn't been to a Pro Bowl, but in his best year uh, in 2019, uh, he rushed the ball for um, 557 yards. That's an average carry. If I'm looking at this correct, 4.2. Uh, 4.2. Uh, right That's on par. Um, but the big thing for him. 92 receptions last year, or in 2019, excuse me, for 993 yards and eight touchdowns. So, I mean, he's a PPR god. I know they had Danny Woodhead a couple of years ago. Uh, he's Danny Woodhead on steroids. Uh, he, he's yeah. a, a, a better rusher, a better receiver. He's right on par. He's not talked about uh, with the CMCs and the Kamaras, but he's right on par with them in terms of receiving talent out of the backfield. Um I'll let who had him rank the highest. Ben, you had him rank the highest. What, what's up with your your love for Austin Eckler? I had him rank seventh, and I mean, I just the, there's. Can you all name me their backup running back? I mean, it's Justin Jackson or Joshua Jackson, the dude from it, North, it's, it, it's 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 pretty bad. As long as he's healthy, he's going to be the guy. The problem, the reason why I didn't have him higher is his lack of touchdowns. He is a smaller guy, and he he's a great running back, but towards the goal line, he seems to get less looks. Um, it's got to be through the air if he's getting a look uh, near the goal line. They just haven't used him as, you know, their goal line running back and, and, and actual rush attempts. But I love Austin Eckler. I love that offense. That offense is going to be high flying. Um, and like you said, he's a guy who can do it receiving and he can do it rushing. I'm hoping he gets that thousand yard season under his belt finally. But we got to think about it, man. They had the traditional running back in Melvin Gordon there. And they chose to go with Austin Eckler and just kind of get Melvin Gordon out of there. So the Chargers also think very highly of him. You got to think the guy's kind of that uh, lunch pail guy that, you know, just just go to work, grind it out. That's what Austin Eckler seems like. You compared him to Danny Woodhead on steroids, and I think he is. It's That's what he is, Danny Woodhead on steroids. He's that white dude that just – he's a beast. He's that guy that you kind of just don't even believe it when you see him, you know, out there doing what he does. Yeah, and um, I, I'm glad you brought that up in terms of them going from that traditional running back from Melvin Gordon and going to Austin Eckler. That does show a lot of belief in his talent, although they do have a new coach. That's a little scary uh, just in terms of he he may not be that coach's guy. The coach right. might want to change things up a little bit. But there's no other guy there. There's no other yeah, guy. Yeah, there's no other guy. But the coach, I, I do want to say the coach came out recently and said that they do plan on using a committee. I don't know if that's they're, smoke they're or fire. They're talking uh, about Joshua Kelly getting cut, possibly. And, oh, you know, well, that's, that's a guy who they drafted that's recently. Good news, that's good news for, for Austin Eckler. But, uh, Justin, he barely snuck into your top ten. Is there anything that you have against Austin Eckler, or are you just um, like some of these other guys better? Well, to me, it, you know, I had to value Barkley a little more just based on both these guys, Barkley and Eckler, have been hurt a lot. Barkley – well, not a lot. Barkley just one time. But before that, Barkley had two 1,000-yard rushing seasons. Eckler still hasn't eclipsed that 1,000-yard rushing mark or a full season, so I couldn't put him above Barkley. I had to value him a little less. Now, he did have a fantastic 2019 season at 993 yards with receptions, but that was, there was a drop-off with 403 and a drop-off in his average. So it wasn't just because he played less games. It was just less production on his part as well. So I valued Barkley just a little bit ahead of Vector. So are you taking um, Saquon in fantasy if he's staring at you this year? Like no, absolutely, a, if he's there, in, not in, with in, a ten foot pole. If he's there in, in uh, towards the later, you know, mid rounds, I'm taking him not right away. Of course not. Well, I mean, well, it's going to be first or second be first round. round. That's what I'm saying. So if you had then Austin I'm not touching Eckler, him at that point. Yeah, if you had Austin Eckler and, and Barkley staring at you in the second round, you might be able to decide between. For fantasy Eckler. purposes, and depends on the league again, if the PPR, I'd go Eckler. Okay. All right. Well, um, let's let's just move on uh, to number nine. It is the guy that we were just debating Austin Eckler with. That is Saquon Barkley. Uh, when healthy, one of the best backs in the league, as we talked about. He is a pretty good receiver. I mean, in 2018, his rookie year, 
he was targeted 120 times out of the backfield, and he ended up with 90 catches. Um, I think he that was the last year of Eli Manning, if I want to uh, say that correctly. So Eli Manning, his arm probably wasn't what it used to be. Um, but nonetheless, Saquon's a do-it-all back. Um, that year, he he put, um, pitched in for 2,000 uh, scrimmage yards, 1,300 rushing yards, and 700-plus uh, uh, receiving yards. So when healthy, he's a do-it-all guy. Uh, the thing that I that holds him back for me and why I had him uh, towards the bottom of my top 10, still ranked uh, higher than some of the guys we've already talked about, is his surrounding cast. I think it's the, he's the one uh, situation where uh, he has to do a lot like to even get a two- or three-yard gain uh, because the last couple of years he's been uh, dealing with a horrible offensive line, and uh, Daniel Jones doesn't help him out very much. Uh, but it is Saquon Barkley. Um, at, at number nine, uh, Ben, you have him at 10. Do you, I, see, do you see a situation just, where Barkley moves up or are you expecting him to fall out of your top 10 this year? I, I should have put Jonathan Taylor in over him at 10, bro, to be honest. I have no faith in the New York Giants. I have no faith in Saquon Barkley. They're already saying that there's hiccups going in training camp, that he might be, you know, a hurt in training camp. So, I want nothing to do. I did draft Barkley number three overall last year in fantasy. Ended up in last place in that league. I was the laughing stock of the league. So that's just more salt in the womb as far as, you know, my hate for Saquon Same Barkley. Thing. But I I honestly, I would put Jonathan Stewart in ahead of him now. Taylor. Taylor. Jonathan Taylor. Uh, Jonathan Stewart. Jonathan Taylor uh, in ahead of him right now. I just, I'm out on the Giants. I know Danny Dimes, I was... You know, I was bigging him up for a while, I was, you know, vouching for him, but I'm out on the Giants and I'm out on Saquon. Okay. Uh, anything you want to add uh, to number nine, Justin, uh, before we move on down the list? Well, I did have Kareem Hunt at number nine, and the reason for that was I just personally think, like you mentioned earlier, <clears throat> that's probably the best uh, backup running back there is right now in the NFL, and I think if he was on any other team, he could be the starter. Uh, so I just have a lot of value for him right now. Um, do, do you have the numbers? He does have to split carries. Do you have the numbers for what he did in Kansas City before You're his crazy. incident? Yeah, in Kansas City, he had a um, a thousand yard uh, rookie season, and then he had an eight hundred and twenty four yard uh, sophomore season. Yeah, and, and he pitched in with about five hundred receiving yards uh, that yes. rookie year. So definitely do it all, guy. That's why he still gets those um, third down looks. Uh, for the Browns there in Cleveland. And at the goal line, he tends to come in over Chubb because he's at receiving option as well. So I have to put him in there. Yeah, definitely the best one-two punch in, in football. Not going to get any um, real hard argument out of me uh, trying to keep Hunt out of the top 10. I had him in my top 10 initially, but then I bumped him out for the guy uh, that when we show all of our lists, uh, we'll see it here. But um, he didn't make our top 10, the guy that I'm talking about. Um, and the number 10 – for we talking about sports uh, running backs list is Antonio Gibson from the Washington football. the Washington football team. I was going to say the other word, but I, I held myself back. Uh, the the Washington football team. Uh, Antonio Gibson was a rookie last year. He's a pretty tall running back. I just want to point that out. He's six two. Uh, not not the um, average height for running back. Probably a little bit taller uh, than what we're accustomed to seeing. Nonetheless. He started 10 games last year, played in 14, um, had about 800 rushing yards for 11 touchdowns, um, about 4.7 yards a carry, uh, pretty good stats. If he probably had the full usage of some of these other running backs, he would have ended up over 1,000. Oh. Uh, pretty good receiver, um, 36 receptions for 247 yards, no touchdowns there. But he did have 11 rushing touchdowns, so he did contribute um, in terms of hitting pay dirt. And – uh, before I let uh, I'll let Ben take it because he did have him ranked high in his list um, in terms of relative to me and Justin, um, is there is word out of camp from Kyle Allen, uh, the, one of the quarterbacks there, that they're trying to use him as a Christian McCaffrey type running back. Um, do you see that, Ben? And do you expect uh, Gibson to <clears throat> rock it up your league? You took a chance on Kenyon Drake last year. Is this your Kenyon Drake this year? This is – I mean, I mean, you had – who? Uh, uh, Ron had him in his top 10 as well. Ron had him at number 10. I had Gibson at number nine. I expect big things. I think that the usage is going to be there for him this year. I think that people are saying that Christian McCaffrey comparison because Ron Rivera is the head coach and he did coach up Christian McCaffrey. I mean, he was, you know, the head coach 
with Christian McCaffrey in Carolina, I, ex I think that he expects to use Gibson the same way. I'm not saying we're going to see Christian McCaffrey numbers, but Gibson's going to be a top 10 running back this coming season when it's all said and done. Um, so I don't think that this is as as out there as me going Kenyon Drake. I think Gibson showed a lot of people that he can do it last year. Uh, he's a guy that's going early in the second round in fantasy football. So people expect a lot from him this year. You got, you know, Ryan Fitzmagic now slinging it. Gives the offense a little bit more, you know, pep in their step and opportunity. I like Antonio Gibson to no doubt finish as a top 10 running back this year. Nice. I like that. I like that. And, you know, you, you got a little bit of assistance from Ron there, also putting him in your top 10. Um, here it's a little bit of a matter of preference. I went with David Montgomery, kind of the same thinking as Ben. I, I expect him to take off a, um, even more this year. I think the usage is going to be there for him. Uh, he had about 1,000 yards rushing last year, eight touchdowns. Um, and he's a pretty good receiver. You don't hear that a lot uh, when you hear David Montgomery brought up in conversations. He did have – uh, 54 catches for 438 yards and two touchdowns. And I think he's walking into a slightly better situation this year uh, with Andy Dalton and Justin Fields as his quarterbacks versus um, Mitchell Trubisky, who's um, in Buffalo this year. So um, I, I do expect David Montgomery to take another step forward this year, and that's why I had him um, as my number 10. And I see, Justin, you, you had Eckler at 10. Did you have Gibson in your range? Did you have him um, around that Is he number the 10 spot? Or not? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I had switched on Hunt and Gibson. I had Gibson before I put Hunt. Just because I, I, the thought process, like I said earlier, was if Hunt was in Gibson's place, do I think Hunt would have been more productive than Gibson? I would lean towards yes because I have seen him uh, with over a 1,000-yard season. And also, you know, Gibson was cut short two games last year. I don't think he gets to that thousand yard mark last year either, even with those two games either. What based about on this year? His average full season, you know, it's hard for the NFC East uh, for a team to repeat uh, success. They did they win got, the division last year. He, he ain't I, I don't gonna know. run against his own defense, and that's I, I don't know if he's gonna be better division. this year. Oh, he's um, going for a thousand, Justin. Me and you, pod bet. He's going for a thousand. We could do that bet. We could do that. All bet. right, thousand I, I, mean, yards. I think he I does get a thousand, but I'm still willing to do the bet. I'm not Just because I didn't rep and didn't have him in the top 10. Uh, I'm not a part of this bet, but I do side with Gibson taking another step forward and probably getting 2,000. I, I like his – his situation is improving. Um, you got yeah. to think Fitzpatrick is going to be an, an upgrade, and um, he has a coach that likes to use the running back a lot, and um, Ron Rivera, like uh, Ben talked about. So, We're yeah. Uh, no, no real hard argument for me uh, getting uh, Gibson out of there, but I, I do like uh, Montgomery. But that's it for the top 10. Anything else you guys want to add? Uh, maybe anybody that isn't on the list that you could possibly see sneaking into the list I, for you. I know Ben said you said Jonathan Taylor. I, I wish I would have put Jonathan Taylor in there, and I even thought about putting Harris in there just because there's always one of those rookie running backs that's in that top ten. Like I know none of us could have called it last year, but Robinson for the Jaguars ended up as a top ten running back, and you know you there's always that rookie that burst onto the scene. So. And we expect uh, Najee Harris, right, in yep. Pittsburgh to be the day one guy and be getting, you know, the bulk of those carries. So I, I thought about putting him at number 10 as well, but I, I wish I would have put John, uh, Jonathan Taylor over uh, Barkley now that I'm, you know, thinking about it. What about I you thought guys? about James Robinson, but the thing that took me away was the time he's probably going to have to split with Travis Etienne. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and for me, um, Justin, you had him on your list. It was uh, Kareem Hunt. The only thing that kept me away from Kareem Hunt is that he's not the running back one. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I went with David Montgomery because he is the, the RB1 there. But, again, no real hard argument uh, to keep any of these guys in or out, especially at the, like, 9 or 10 range. But that's right. it for the top 10. Uh, we, we just hit quarterbacks. So we just finished running backs this episode. And I think next up we got wide receivers. So I think, that's, I think that might be the best Divas. one that we do yet because uh, I, I know there's a lot of – preference when it comes especially to the top three because uh, the top three i think are all pretty close and have been close for a few years uh so uh we'll, we'll see what happens next uh next week uh, when we hit up the the wide receivers that was uh the week talking about sports top 10 uh, running backs list and uh, we're gonna keep it going we've been knocking out these divisions at a pretty good pace here um episode 50 we saved it for the afc east uh, we're going to give the, the AFC East a little bit of shine this uh, this episode. We're going to do the division review here. 
Uh, we're, as always, we're going to do a little bit of a year a year in review, and then we're going to go ahead and hit the division champs and go all the way down to last place and um, break everything down that's, that's happened for the team. So without further ado, the AFC East, the Bills, they won their first AFC East title since 1995 last year. That snapped an 11-year run by the Patriots and Tom Brady. Uh, Brady goes on and moves on to – to win the Super Bowl last year, and the the Patriots, I believe, went eight and eight. And we'll get to them when uh, we talk talk about the Patriots. But the Bills, they were the only team to make the playoffs from the division. So that's been a, a big talk about this division the past couple of years. It's always been the Patriots and a bunch of scrubs, really, until the Bills have had their come up um, the, these past couple of years. And uh, the Dolphins have seen to find things on the um, on the right track. But uh, nonetheless, the Bills they are favored to repeat. Um, in 2021, uh, that is the big story in the AFC East, also uh, followed by the Patriots and whether or not they can rebound uh, rebound from their, excuse me, I said eight and eight earlier, but they went seven and nine last year uh, versus the, the Bills who went 13 and three. They were the division champs. They went seven one at home down at Orchard Park. They have one of the best home field advantages in all the football. You never know what's going to be thrown on the field. You know, usually fans just throw popcorn and soda and stuff like that onto the field and maybe a, an occasional beer bottle. <laughs> they throw they throw sex toys onto the field over there in, in Buffalo. And, dildos, uh, Roland. <laughs> dildos, there you go. I'll, I'll go ahead and say the word. Just trying to avoid that word and uh, dance around it. But uh, Ben just jumped right into it. But um, anyways, six, seven and one at home down at Orchard Park or up in Orchard Park, excuse me, from Texas. Uh, six and two on the road. Uh, they were six and zero oh against the division. So it, it looks like the division champ these past couple of years have, have always owned the division. You go 6-0 and against your foes. That's going to be good. Uh, they lost in the AFC title game against the Chiefs, 38-24. Uh, to 24. Uh, They were one of the, the stronger teams last year in terms of they only had five games that were decided by a touchdown or less, and they were 4-1 and one in those games. Um, so their average margin of victory last year was close to a touchdown. Uh, so that they were winning and they were winning decisively. Um, I don't have their against the spread record, but I'd be interested to see what it was that they were uh, winning but on an average of a touchdown. You'd have to think their cover rate uh, was pretty good last year. Yeah. Uh, the, the big storyline for them um, as a team this year is can Josh Allen continue his progression? Uh, we saw him take a big jump last year. He threw for about 4,500 passing yards, 37 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, uh, he pitched in for eight rushing touchdowns and 421 rushing yards. MVP, um, MVP talks most of the year. Uh, he was right in that discussion, um, and rightfully so. Uh, but one of the big keys for the Bills last year in terms of their offseason moves was bringing over Stefan Diggs. Uh, they brought over Diggs, and he was a big, big factor for them. Uh, he had about eight touchdowns on – um, 127 catches and 1,500 yards. He led yards. the league. Led the yeah. league in receptions. He, he, he was a monster last year. Um, notable props for them uh, coming into 2021, plus 1,200 to win the Super Bowl, uh, plus 550 to win the AFC Championship. Uh, their 2021 season win total is set at 11. Uh, to win the AFC East, they're minus 150. Um, I don't know if that says more about them or the rest of the division. Uh, Josh Allen to win MVP plus 800, and uh, we like to throw this prop out there sometimes as uh, their odds to make the playoffs, juiced uh, to minus 400, yes, and uh, their plus 300, no. So uh, we talked about Stefan Diggs being brought over last year. Uh, they follow that up with bringing um, Emmanuel Sanders in. Uh, I think he was last with the, the Saints, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Uh, they bring in Matt Breida. Um, to beef up that um, that running back room, uh, Jacob Hollister tight end, and they beef up the offensive line with Forrest Lamp. Their uh, their draft, not a lot of notable names on there uh, for people who don't follow the um, the the Bills. Uh, Gregory Rousseau was their first round pick uh, from the Miami uh, Hurricanes. Ben, you, you you had a little bit of reaction to that. Is there anybody here that they drafted that you like? Both of those guys were raising hell. I mean, I know it was a preseason, but, I mean, they, they were in the backfield. It, the thing with the Bills is, like, they see the whatever they need to help on, and they clearly go and address it. You see first round, defensive end, defensive end. Um, and both of the guys had really good showings. The first preseason game, like I said, I know it's preseason, but, I mean, Boogie Basham had, I believe, two roughing the passer calls. So, like, 
like they're eager to get after it, bro. I like it. I like it. Nice. And uh, you bring up a good point. They do have a very good front office. Um, I mean, they've been taking care of stuff, including, uh, you know, signing Josh Allen to that big uh, six-year deal um, and all that guaranteed money uh, that keeps them in uh, Buffalo till 2028. Uh, but just to wrap up their offseason in terms of um, free agent moves and stuff, they lost uh, John Brown uh, to the Raiders, uh, Quinn and Jefferson, um, also to the Raiders, and they lost their tight end Tyler Croft, who'd been a, a little bit of a safety valve for them the past couple of years. Um, their schedule, in terms of strength of schedule, is number 23 uh, based on a 2020 uh, win percentage. And I'm just going to throw it to, to the guy who's wearing the Josh Allen jersey. What, what's your, your prediction here before we all give our, our predictions? Looking at the schedule and licking my chops, bro, that, that over under 11 looks like a damn Christmas gift is what it looks like. Um, I don't I don't see how they're the 23rd ranked schedule. I mean, I guess because it's the game at New Orleans, but we don't expect the same New Orleans team. I do have them dropping the game in Tampa, and I do have them losing to the Chiefs. Um, but it's hard to see more than three losses on this schedule to me. I don't think that it's very – it's – it's. you said it's the 23rd, what, hardest schedule? Yeah, 23rd ranked. Oh, okay, then, yeah, that's what it looks like. That's what it looks like for sure. And, and Justin, do you see them running through their division again um, on, on the way to uh, maybe a 12-victory season or 12 win season? I don't want to break down that the rest of the division, but from what I see here in their schedule – I can easily pencil them in for 12 wins that I see just on the schedule. To talk about what Ben was talking about earlier, Gregory Rosal, that's a big time pick. Russo. He's got a lot of Chase Young, you know, similarities. He only had one college football season and he was only one sack behind Chase Young. He redshirted his freshman year, played at Miami, and then took this past year off for COVID. I expect big things from him. I think he's an awesome talent. And I was kind of surprised he fell that far. Behind. And, well, you, you got to be an awesome talent if you're going to sit the year out and still get picked in the first round. I mean, we saw Chase yeah. Young go top five bait and doing the exact same thing. But you got to be a you got to be a big dog to to still be drafted in the first round after sitting out a whole year. Yeah, he's six six two seventy. He's going to be a force and, out there. And, and another guy that they that they got from addition that sat out last season is Star Latulaleu, who is a defensive oh, sure, tackle. Veteran he for the run. Yeah, veteran defensive tackle, you know, in the middle. And he set out last year with COVID, but he's back this year. And good things out of camp. I mean, he's not playing preseason. The Bills are – Josh Allen, they already said, is not going to play Saturday against the Bears. A lot of the starters are not going to play again. No um, need for them to. Yeah, but th it's they're bringing back a lot of the same core, Roland. You look at the departures, and, yeah, John Brown did work. But when you bring in Emmanuel Sanders – you know, to fill in for his role, it's kind of like it, it, it evens itself out. And then Quentin Jefferson, obviously defensive lineman, but you get started to lay it back. And the tight end, Croft, I mean, that is one of the holes that I wish that they would have addressed during the draft. But there wasn't that guy in the first round to take like that. And running back, I mean, I'm not very excited about the running back room in Buffalo and the tight end room. Yeah, and, you know, I, I agree with you guys, and I want to say all three of us are, are pretty high on the Bills this year. I, I do agree in terms of giving them losses against uh, Kansas City. I mean, Tampa. I mean, if you want – I mean, Kansas City, Tampa. Also, if you and want to be strict games. about it, they could win those games. But, but I'm it's just, for the sake of you have to yeah, put losses on there. Losses on the schedule, and they're on the road. Um, and then I, if you want to go even further, you can give them maybe a loss at Tennessee, but it's hard to see them losing back-to-back -back games, such a talented team. So it sounds like we're all pretty high on these guys. Um, they could start 4-0. And I'm going to be in the building guess, November 21st against the Colts, so my the question, Colts stand no fucking chance. My, my <laughs> question uh, would be, though, just to play a little devil's advocate, is what is something in your guys' mind that could derail the Bills uh, this year? And uh, I'll just lead it off with what I think could potentially stop them. Although I'm not saying this is going to happen, but um, is Josh Allen, do you think – well, it's I think personally, thing. if he if he thing. maybe reverts back to the way that he was the year before last, I could see that as um, stunting this team and, and their growth. Although that year that I'm talking about, it was good enough for them to get into the wild card. Um, but it, we'll see. I, I do think the division being weak is going to um, help them out. But do you guys see anything else that could hold them back? Or do you, do you think it's all on number 17? It's on 17, man. Like I said, I don't like the running back room, so you can't. 
it's kind of like the, uh, you know, like these it, these teams where it, it's on the quarterback shoulders. Like you know that you're not going to rely on the run game. If you get there, it's going to be because your quarterback gets you there. That's exactly what the Buffalo Bills are. And I think the addition of of Stephon Diggs. I'm now we're we're talking about Stephon Diggs. I know it's fantasy wise, but he's a top five receiver being taken. And does that correlate to is he a top five receiver in the NFL? I mean, we're going to get to it next week, but I think that's very debatable. He led the league in receptions last year. So I think the addition of Stephon Diggs leveled up Josh Allen, bro. You know, now you have that guy. You have that number one. And then you add in Cole Beasley, who's over there calling himself, you know, the best slot receiver in the NFL. And now while that's his opinion, you know, he can argue that. I don't think he's top five, but I number one, but he's top five slots in the NFL yeah. as well. And Cole Beasley. So he he's has top three. It, you know, if we want to get very technical, yeah, but he has his guys. He has his guys that he can throw to and depend on now. And there's some other there's some other wider and now you add Emmanuel Sanders, a veteran, a guy who's sure handed for the most part. Maybe he won't give you the most after the catch, but when you need a first down, you need a catch, that's where you go for that out route on third and four. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I Josh Allen is set up nice. It sucks that the Jaguars reached and drafted uh, Etienne. Because if the Jaguars had gotten Etienne, whoo, it would have been the over. Bills. I mean, the Bills. I'm sorry, yeah, mm-hmm. the Bills. Because the Jaguars ended up getting him. If the Bills yeah. had gotten him, and that's where they were going, bro. They were going Etienne, but the Jaguars jumped out and drafted him. Uh, but, I mean, Justin, do you see anything uh, that can derail the Bills? Just we barring get some picks? sort of injury to the you know QB one, QB two is not so bad in Trubisky either. I mean. I think he's a serviceable I, backup, I um, like a lot that. better backup situation than other teams are in. At the end of the day, you look at these additions and you look at the departures. The additions outweigh the departures. I expect this team to win the division, and um, I think there's a big drop also uh, from this team to the next three teams, in my opinion, for this division. Very, very fair point, and so that leads me to my next question before we get into our, our picks here for the Bills because I think uh, we're, we're going to have a consensus uh, we talking about sports pick here, but um, do you do you see a little bit of the the Patriots and the Bills that they're able to keep uh, Josh Allen there? Obviously, they have him signed through twenty twenty eight. But do you see the Bills kind of uh, running shop with this uh, division for the next couple of years? I do personally. I, yeah, it, I, it, it it could happen. You have another team in the division that's been building well. Um, that that's you know hoping to do the same thing. But I think it's going to come down to – it always comes down to who's got the – what team has the best quarterback. That's usually what it comes down to. And if Josh Allen keeps putting up these numbers, man, he's going to find himself as a guy that is going to be a year-in, year-out top-five quarterback. Based on what we've seen, if he keeps doing this shit, I mean, the sky's the limit for the Bills, honestly. MVP All right. talks there for him going to be the next three four seasons. Yeah, the MVP talks will be there. Yep, and it's going to be, it's going to be him versus Mahomes in the playoffs – uh, pretty much every year. I'm, I'm looking forward to that um, for years to come. But, uh, without further ado, uh, do you guys want to give out the uh, the first pick uh, of the, the episode for the AFC East? Sure. We're going to go Bills team total over 11. We're going to lay the juice at minus 135. But, I mean, like I said, you really have to – you can give them three losses just because they're all road games. Roll and stress how good they are inside of Orchard Park. Um, and – they don't have too many tough games at home. I could see the Patriots possibly, you know, depending if they figure it out. Bill Belichick, you can never count him out just based on the way that he, you know, schemes for Josh Allen. They played them tight last year. And that that game versus Washington, um, because it is early in the season, and, you know, Fitzpatrick will just start to get rolling. He won't be, you know, towards the end down, uh, you know, nose diving. So I, I there's some games, but – Three losses is what I see. You know, last year they had three losses. You add in one extra game, you have the 23rd ranked schedule. And now there's only one bye week. And, you know, because they added that extra playoff team. So this is a team where you got to think is going to be with the Chiefs pushing for that bye week. And it's going to be crucial to, you know, have home field advantage throughout the playoffs with the home field advantage that you have in Buffalo. Ben, this is your team. Therefore, I, I do want you to break down this division as far as wins losses for the Bills within the division. Who are they splitting games I, with? Are I they think going undefeated in division? I can What's see happening? them losing one division game. One division game. That's and it. that's Patriots? 
And uh, it, it could be Patriots and it could be Dolphins. But I just don't okay. see it with the Dolphins. But I'm thinking it might. It could be the Patriots, you know, in New England. Five I and could, one in the division. I could see like a 17 to 14 type of game that the Patriots win or some shit like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So but, five and one in the division. Yeah. No more than one loss in the division. Yeah. No more okay. than one loss. Roland, what do you think as far as division goes within the division AFC East? The division goes. I, I see the Bills going five and one. Um, I, the only game I can maybe see them losing is um, if they go to Miami in that second week of the season. That's always a tough game, uh, but they don't have to really worry about the time difference because uh, they are on the East Coast uh, in Buffalo. And then the other game I would probably look to is um, in New England um, and de- December twenty sixth, depending where uh, New England it's is. In December, the season. Bro. Yeah. yeah, and it, it's in uh, Foxborough, so. I can maybe see four and two at the very worst, but I see five and one, six and zero oh, most likely. Because honestly, when we talk about the rest, the Bills, and the reason why I asked that question about them running shop is because all these other teams they just have they have question marks, and the Bills yeah. don't have a lot of question marks, and, and they have what you can count on, and that's the jersey that Ben's wearing as uh, Josh Allen, and uh, I think we're all banking on him continuing to progress. The, the one reason why I see it being that New England game, you know, late in December is because I could see New England, you know, pushing for that wild card spot yes. and ha- and having their quarterback situation figured out mm-hmm. by week 15 yeah. or week 14 when they play. So I, that's, I agree that's a so much, loss, man. I yeah, I agree a lot with you on this one. And uh, uh, Justin, do you mind telling us where we can put in some of these bets? Oh, you know where you got to put the bets in. That's at Bet King. And that's <laughs> on Twitter. There- Use the code hashtag WTBS, you know, a little promotion there for you. And not only that, make a $200 deposit. Get started for the NFL season. Yeah, what do they got going on? NFL Survivor. Uh, Ben was in that previously. Ben, you know the rules on that. Can you tell us a little bit about the NFL Survivor pool? The way the Survivor pool works, and from what I'm hearing, they're having, what, a $1,000 prize pool on their Survivor pool? Thousand bucks. A thousand bucks, you know, and you get entered into this with your deposit into Bet King. Um, what it is is you're picking one NFL team. You know, you're picking a team to win. Week one, all the games, you pick one team just to win. They don't have to cover the spread, just win the game. Once you pick the Chiefs week one, you can no longer pick the Chiefs. So you have to survive the season, see who can survive the longest. Last year, I know there was a lot of pools that nobody survived the whole season. Last year was a fucking mess, to be honest. Um, so you got to be strategic on when you use, you know, your good teams. You, you're going to want to be picking on teams like the Texans, teams like the the Lions, you know, those lower level teams. So Survivor Pool is pretty cool to play. You know, it's it's simple. You pick one team just to win. You track it. It's fun to go along, and it's free as long as you hit them up with the promotion. So I don't see why anybody wouldn't want to do it. Yeah, free shot at a thousand bucks. Give you a full nod to. Nice. And uh, before we move on from the Bills, uh, as we like to get into in each of our uh, divisional breakdowns, is uh, the fantasy outlook for each of these teams. Uh, the we, fantasy we talk, outlook. We that talked about uh, Josh Allen, and we talked about Stefan Diggs. Uh, ben, let, let us know. What, what are we looking for uh, with let's, the Buffalo Bills? Let's, let's talk about what we're not looking for. We're not looking to draft the tight end for the uh, Buffalo Bills. That's what we're not looking for. So we're not going to waste any time there. If we're going into the backfield, you got uh, Singletary and you've got Zach Moss. Uh, now, Zach Moss has already been banged up. He's uh, he's injured uh, during training camp. And like we said, I don't think that you want to be invested. I think those are guys that you might plug if you're you you know you're, you're, on, you're hit by that bye week. But these aren't guys that you're going out there looking to draft, to be honest. I think, you know, where you're looking for fantasy value is going to be with Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, and Cole Beasley. I think that's where you look, possibly even the defense. The defense is going to be pretty stout this year, especially in the division that they play in against young quarterbacks trying to figure it out. I think that they could be holding teams, you know, to some low scores. But Josh Allen, guys. So Josh Allen is the second quarterback being taken off the board behind Patrick Mahomes. Do you all agree? Everybody's expecting them to have another big year. Do you all I agree. agree? I agree. Uh, just because I think uh, he adds uh, so much on the ground that's not talked about a lot, and I expect that to continue. He's a big guy. Not a lot of people talk about it. He does it more – I'm not comparing him to him in terms of his running style, but it's similar. Is like Cam Newton. He's like right. that type of runner. Right. A young Cam Newton, obviously, yeah. because it's young Josh Allen. Yeah, you remember, yeah, yeah. young Cam Newton was a beast. 
Mm-hmm. Don't get it twisted. A lot of people don't respect Cam's name anymore. So we got to specify when when we're comparing to. But Justin, what do you think? Josh Allen, are you looking to draft him second? Do you have maybe fantasy-wise, are you looking maybe Murray over him? Or where do you have Josh Allen going? Yeah, I have no problem drafting him second. I do have some my some reservations about him. But for the most part, if he's there, I'm taking him in the early round. Not too early, of course, because I don't always go quarterback first. But, you know, my first quarterback choice would be somebody like him. He's projected okay. like towards the end of the third, beginning early of the fourth, fourth round. Right? Yeah. Yep. If he's if he's there in the fourth, absolutely. Yeah, I'll take him on the turn in the fourth of you, sir. Because by then, you know, you have either your two running backs and receiver, or you have your running back, receiver, tight end, whatever you did. And you know, if you can lock up one of those top quarterback, if you can lock up potentially the number one quarterback in the fourth round, gotcha. I mean, you you got to lock up those position battles. Yeah. So yeah. I I agree with you. I wouldn't mind drafting him there. I was able to keep him in a keeper league with my 10th round pick from last year. So this year I won't have a 10th round pick because that's where Josh Allen is slotted. So looking nice. forward to that. Stefan Diggs, guys, without giving too much away for next week's rankings, he did lead the league in receptions last year. If you are playing in the PPR league, if it's full point, I mean, he was a monster. He might have been wide receiver number one or two behind Ridley because I know Ridley had a huge year last year. But what do you all think about Stefan Diggs? Uh, safe having him as your number one wide receiver. Are you looking to get Stefan Diggs? How do you feel about him? Uh, Super I'm safe pick to me. Yeah, I'm targeting him in my drafts uh, when I can. I haven't had a draft yet. I have one coming up on Sunday. Um, okay. And if I, can, if I can get him, it's a PPR league. Um, I, I'm going to nab him every time. I, I mean, he's yeah. come. He's in that second round range. So if he right. falls to me um, in the second round, I, I'm taking him. Justin? We're definitely looking his way if he's available. Even yeah. maybe even the first. I'm high on Diggs. That one keeper league I'm telling you about, man. Last year, Stefan Diggs was drafted in the sixth round in fantasy football. Just to give you like a little bit of, you know, uh, an observation of where he was last year and the value that he is this year. We're talking about him in the second round. So definitely the move to Buffalo was a big thing for Stefan Diggs. I, I, I love him as well. I think that you can't miss on him. Now, Cole Beasley, flex option. In a PPR league, rolling as a, as you know that slot receiver, Justin. How do y'all feel about Cole, Cole Beasley? Or are you just not drafting him because he ain't got the vax rolling? Uh, I, know, I know your team has a tight policy rolling. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get over that 85 percent threshold, like the the rest of the NFL <laughs> teams, if I if I can. Uh, but nah, uh, Cole Beasley, it, he's not a guy Cole that Cole Beasley I'm, be the exception. Hey, rolling? Is he, it, does he, he have that the Cole Beasley used to be my boy. I mean, he's a former Dallas Cowboy. I know he has his strong views um, on the Vax, but he is one of the better slot guys, as uh, you and Justin both alluded to in your analysis of, of the Bills and their receiving corps. Um, if I'm in like a league, for example, like the one that just coincidentally that I'm drafting in on Sunday, that's a three wide receiver and two flex league, I might draft him because I'm going to need him on the bench. So Eighth round, ninth round, that. Cole Weasley? Definitely wouldn't mind having him on my team. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I'm in a league where it's three wide receivers and a flex, um, and it's a full point PPR. So I'm actually, and that draft is Sunday rolling. I'm thinking about going zero running back. That was where I kept Josh Allen. Do you, oh, shit. Okay. I see what you're saying. This one, I, I don't find out the draft. It's a complete redraft, and I don't find out the draft order till I get there. It's a live draft, too. So yeah, I'm picking number four in a keeper league. So I'm looking at like Tyreek Hill, possibly, but we'll see. Um, that's it for the Bills, man, as far as fantasy wise. I don't. Anybody else that you all maybe have interest in, but like I don't think that there's anything else here. No, I think we hit it. Okay. Yeah, right. just again, I think they win the division straight up. Yep. And that's another, I mean, just before we move on, that's another pretty decent bet. It's only juiced to minus one fifty. But it's juiced a little more. Yeah. Yeah, it's juiced a little more, but I wouldn't mind throwing some change on on that bet either, personally. Just to they'll be battling for that buy, and it's yeah. definitely gonna take a lot more than eleven wins to do it. Yep. I'll tell you that. Alrighty, well, uh, this might uh, surprise a few, uh, considering their past history, um, is uh, the Miami Dolphins, uh, the guys down there on, in South Beach. Uh, they got second place with a 10-6 and six record, 5-3 and three at home. They do have a little bit of a home field advantage down there, getting guys to, to go over there and spend a weekend in South Beach. Uh, they were 5-3 and three on the road, though. They split completely against the division, 3-3. Three and three. Um, they improved their win total over two uh, over 2019 by five games. So big improvement for them. Uh, they had a couple close games uh, last year. Five decided by a touchdown. They went two and three in those games. 
Uh, the big story last year, and it continues to be the story this year, is who is their quarterback? Is Tua the guy? Uh, last year, there was a little bit of a back and forth between him and Fitzpatrick. As we all know, uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick got off to that crazy start. The, the Dolphins were looking like they were going to make the playoffs. And then they decided to go ahead and make the change. Sometimes we see it when the veteran's struggling. They'll go to the, the rookie and they'll go ahead and say it's time. But we have seen it in the past. It's been rare uh, where the incumbent or the veteran's doing good, and they still go to the rookie regardless. Um, I think the one time I can remember it, it's a long ass time ago, but I think Kerry Collins was doing pretty good for the Giants one year, and they just went ahead and went to – It was – it was premeditated, Roland. Yeah, premeditated. Yeah, they were going to do it regardless. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, there was that back and forth. Fitzpatrick found his way in a lot of games. He ended up leading them in uh, passing yards um, and passing touchdowns. So uh, Fitzpatrick, though, no longer there. Uh, we'll get to that here in a second. A notable props for them uh, to win the Super Bowl, they're plus 2,500. Uh, to win the AFC Championship, they're plus 1,500. Uh, they're over under. Interesting number. It's at nine. Uh, there is no more eight and eight. So it's, you're either at eight or nine uh, above or below 500. It's juiced to minus 135 to win the division. They're plus 300. I think that's good for second place odds uh, to make the playoffs. It's plus 100. Uh, yes. And it's juiced to minus 130 for no. That's interesting. Uh, Tua is their best option at winning MVP at plus 4,000 uh, if you're a believer. Uh, like we said, uh, Fitzpatrick. He's no longer there. Uh, he did lead the departures, but he he was uh, replaced by Jacoby Brissett as uh, the backup quarterback now. Uh, they did add uh, McKinney uh, as a linebacker. Jason McCourty comes over from the Patriots as a corner. Um, they added uh, Will Fuller as a wide receiver. Uh, Malcolm Brown as a running back. I think he might have fantasy impact more than anything. And then they did sure up that offensive line with Matt Skira as their center. Um, they did lose something on the defensive uh, side of the ball, though. Kyle Van Noy and Shaq Lawson, uh, the both ed ru edge rushers, end up uh, going uh, elsewhere in the AFC. Um, and then they did lose Eric Flowers, although I, th I think they might be happy to lose him, just considering his past history. Uh, no offense to Eric Flowers, though. I mean, he's still an NFL player. He ends up with the, the Washington football team, so we'll see how he fares for them. Anyways, uh, looking at their 2021 schedule, it is towards the bottom, and that's what makes their number so interesting at nine. It is uh, the 27th ranked schedule in terms of uh, strength, uh, 2021 percentage. Um, I have them at first glance at around nine and eight, 10 and seven. I'm not confident on that number. I, I could see an argument for them going a little bit lower. And the reason why I say that, when I look at their stats from last year, you, you just wonder, like, how did they get it done? Right, like it's uh, it's ridiculous. Um, Ryan Fitzpatrick and Atua, they didn't even combine to throw for 3,000 yards together. Uh, their passing touchdowns were about 24 combined, also. And Tua had 15 interceptions. Uh, you definitely uh, have a little concern there. And then, um, their leading offensive player was probably Miles Gaskin, he had 972. Um, all purpose yards. I don't know what he's gonna be up to this year, but um. Their big draft pick before I move on uh, was Jalen Waddle. I don't want to overlook his name. He, he's a receiver from Alabama, and they pair him up um, with Tua. Uh, Justin, first receiver off the board, too, yeah, right? First receiver off the board. It wasn't surprised, even expected. Surprised a couple of people, kind of like Henry Ruggs the year before from from Alabama. But, Justin, you're, you're a Bama guy. You you followed Tua for a while. Well, you, you – or I know – well, maybe I'm wrong there. You give me that, that look. Ron, Ron is a Bama wrong. guy. My bad. Um, but do, do you believe That's in Justin. Tua? Justin. Do you believe in Tua and the Dolphins uh, continuing their upward trajectory? We we talked about their five game improvement over nineteen. Do you see another improvement um, for them this coming year? I got them pegged at eight wins right now that I can pencil in. I'm hard time uh, finding anything over nine right now. I'm not fully. Um, I don't fully believe that the quarterback battle is over, even though Fitzpatrick's gone. Ooh. You got Brissett there, who's not, you know, the worst backup. We've seen him start for teams when uh, Brady was out with the Patriots, and then he went to the Colts to to be the, you know, QB one over there for a while. So I'm not fully convinced two is going to be the starter the whole season. I'm just really not. Um, and I just oh. got them around eight wins. I, I can't find another win for them past that. My my biggest, uh, you know, question on the Dolphins coming into this year is. 
what the, what the Dolphins really think on Tua? Like, what, where is the leash? What's the leash? Like, what, what are they looking for this season? Is it, you know, playoffs or bust? Is it wild card or bust? Or what are the actual expectations for Tua? Well, you know, I don't think they would like to see um, a step the Chargers. back. They, they I, don't well, like, what if the Chargers make it before them taking Herbert, a guy that they passed up on, you know? I, I think that this is a big-time prove-it year for Tua. Yeah, it's I a mean, show me year. It's a show me year. Big time, mm-hmm. rolling like big time. And but I mean, just to give Tua a little bit of you know slack, and I don't want to give him too much because this is the NFL, and you don't get and you too don't much get slack, a lot of slack getting pick number three he, overall. He really didn't. He really did not have a um, a rookie year like training camp and off season uh, because of injury and because of, I think COVID also. He's he is a second year player, right? This this coming yes. year, yeah. yeah, yeah. So he didn't. Yeah. He had his off season taken away because of COVID. Uh, we saw that didn't matter for Justin Herbert, but. And uh, he also guy, didn't have to start different. off the jump. He didn't yeah. start off the jump either, though. So I, I have, see – He had a shorter see, leash last year. I see like a Trey Lance and, and Tua. I see Trey Lance being in the Tua situation from last year, this coming season. But big time prove it year for me for Tua. And I was going to ask you all, based on, you know, the, the props, the odds that you gave – do you see value anywhere? Like if my, you had to take something, where would my you My favorite bet, I would probably take to make the playoffs, no. Uh, no? I, I, I like that. I like that number. I don't see a route for them to the playoffs. I, I think even though they were to get to nine wins, which is at the top of my projections for them, like best case scenario, I don't think that'll be good enough for the playoffs this year. Um, I think you're going to need at least 10 wins. Okay. Justin, you just, you're not interested in the Dolphins this season? Man, and you I hate see to say it. that because this is one of my dad's beloved teams. He oh, grew up like in the Dolphins. Shout out, uh, Eddie. I think, I think defensively they're not so bad, you know, with the cornerbacks they have and the safety. But yeah, I didn't even I mention just, Howard. And offensively, we, you know, you add um, Waddle and you got the kid from the Texans over here now. The Fuller, speedster, suspended game Fuller. one. Suspended yeah, game Fuller. one, but he'll be there. But I just don't he think needs. the coach believes in Tua, and I think that's going to translate to the locker room. I really, I really have uh, my doubts about the fans here. I could see the locker room being split on Tua uh, just because of, you know, the way that the – and not that, not that it's Tua's fault either. Yeah, what happened last year and the way that the media is going to play the Tua card, like he's the guy, he's the guy. Yeah. And I could see the team kind of getting tired of it if they're maybe losing those close yeah, games. Yeah, I, I thought the team kind of handled it poorly last year, especially like – a, you take into consideration that Fitzpatrick had the team in a good spot, right? We talk yeah. about it being premeditated. That's one thing. But then yeah. to have the back and forth, it's like, hey, you're going to put this guy in. He's your guy. Like, you're not going to put him in and then, oh, at the first sign of distress or, like, the first sign of struggle, you're going to yeah. pull him out and put in Fitzpatrick as, a, um, you know, the relief pitcher, which he ended up winning a game or two for them or had some heroics out of that role. Um, that you, you got to wonder if that helps Tua in his development or that, you know, stunts him a little bit in the way that they handled that, that rookie season for him. But uh, we'll see. Um, it's n- nothing for me to want to wanna bet on a season total for them going over the nine. Yeah. I, I'm not confident in that at all. I think it's a big time show me season for the Dolphins this season. Yeah. Um, but I think the most interesting thing for uh, them, at least this year, in terms of our discussions, are going to be is the fantasy, fantasy, uh, fantasy wise. Because uh, I, I just want to lead it with this little comment before you get into your thing, Ben. Is uh, Brian Flores said that they do plan to go running back by committee this year? Also, they did say that. So, and um, I'm, I'm not going to lie, guys. This talking about it, it doesn't really excite me. I'm not looking to go anywhere here. Fantasy wise, to be honest, like, do you all? I mean, I don't. I, two is not getting drafted. Um, Maybe in Gas- a two quarterback league. Yeah, if you're playing that shit, uh, you're, playing <laughs> that, you're playing that amateur shit. I guess you know draft Tua, but Tua ain't getting drafted. I mean, Will Fuller might go late, but any interest yeah, in Will, Will Fuller. Fuller from you? All? Any interest in Will Fuller it, from you? All? Depending how low he drops, I'll take a flyer on him just because bench guy. Bench guy, and there's really there's nobody else. Like I know Devonte Parker's there, but he's gonna be probably the best guy. At what he does, he was pretty good last year. He was yeah. pretty good last year. He he was yeah. good for top a uh, top ten running back. I mean receiver in fantasy last year while he was any playing. interest in Waddle? It's waiver wire interest if he's there. Okay, 
I'm not touching the fins unless it's a waiver waiver issue to fill in a week of some sort that I need yeah, somebody. I somebody got hurt. I'm a little I, disappointed that uh, Flores made that comment about them going running back by committee because Miles Gaskin he only played interest. in ten he only played in ten games last year and he put up numbers. We talk about yeah, those all purpose yards, 972 in like ten games. That's that's pretty stud like when you talk about fantasy football. And what he was at Washington, Roland, in college, right? I believe yes, he, was, he was at yes, Washington, Washington, and he was a do-it-all back there. He was a three-down back. He was a horse for them. I mean, I know it's college, but the guy showed a lot of good things last year. He was one of those hot waiver wire pickups later in the season, week eight, week nine. Uh, some guys, you know, were starting him to get into the playoffs. You know, he, he was a big piece last year, but that was honestly the only interest I had. Maybe Gasicki, the tight end, you know, if I'm punting on tight end, and just taking a guy later, I could see Gasicki. He's pretty athletic, and they did hook up a couple of times for touchdowns uh, last season. So not much fantasy interest for me, honestly, with the Dolphins. The defense could be a look. All right. All right, anything else before we move on uh, from the 2020 second-place team? Nope. All right, well, I think this might be one of the more interesting teams that we're going to talk about tonight, and that is the New England Patriots. Uh, they're actually playing tonight. I don't know if they've kicked off yet, uh, but they do have yeah. a preseason game. Uh, they did finish third place last year, as I mentioned at the top of the breakdown. That snapped their 11-year uh, reign on the AFC East uh, with Brady and Belichick uh, running things for them. Uh, they finished 7-9 and nine last year. They were still strong at Foxborough. Some things just don't change. They were 5-3 and three at home. They were 2-6 and six on the road. Split against the division, so still fairly competitive. Uh, they beat everybody but the uh, but the Bills. They went three and three against the division. They missed the playoffs. They had some close games. Uh, they had seven points decided by a touchdown or less. They were three and four in those games. Uh, the most notable one was the one where Cam got stuffed at the goal line against uh, the Seahawks when they decided to go quarterback keeper at the one. Um, and then he ended up getting COVID, and you know the season kind of. Uh, went down the drain, but Cam Newton was their, their leading player last year, uh, 2,600 all-purpose yards, or no, excuse me, about 3,200 all-purpose yards, excuse me, that was his passing yards. He only had eight touchdowns and 10 interceptions, though, uh, but he did pitch in with 12 rushing touchdowns, so pretty much like a little running back there. Uh, props for the 2021 season, plus 2,000 to win the Super Bowl, not used to seeing that for the Patriots, uh, plus 1,600 to win the AFC they're over under though. Interesting number, a little higher than I expected to see it. Is at nine and a half. Is juiced to minus one thirty five uh, to win the AFC East. Uh, they're plus three hundred. So I think they are tied with the the Dolphins for second place odds uh, to make the playoffs. Yes is plus one ten. No is minus one twenty. Cam Newton to win MVP is plus forty five hundred. And Mac Jones, they're much talked about rookie quarterback. Uh, that they took in the first round, uh, plus 1,000 to win Offensive Rookie of the Year. Um, their 2021 additions, they added Malik Collins on the uh, defensive line, Christian Kirksey to beef up that linebacking core. Um, and they did add oh, – I believe I had, this is wrong, Roland. I think those yeah. are the Houston additions. I might have made a mistake and uh, had them added. Definitely. Philip oh, Lindsay's a Texan. But yeah, the Patriots are a team that – the Patriots are a team that are getting a lot of players back next year due, uh, due to like sitting out last year. Yeah, they Patrick, had a bunch of guys um, out to COVID. Patrick John was one of them. Johnu Smith coming over too. Uh, the tight ends, you know, uh, Hunter Henry and Johnu Smith. Spent big a lot of things, money on those guys. Big things are expected, I think, from Patriots fans just based on how much money the Patriots went out and spend this offseason. It's usually not their MO, but this offseason they were first out there in the market. And they were snagging up their guys, all the guys that they wanted, boom, snagging them up. I think I, I see some value in this, honestly. Um, Mac Jones to win rookie of the year. I mean, how soon can he be playing? If yeah. if Mac Jones starts playing soon, early enough to, you know, possibly get them that wild card or push for the division, we said that we possibly had, you know, the Bills losing that game in Foxborough late in the season. So Mac Jones. I think that you're just going to have to play the numbers game with all the rookie QBs this year. I do think a rookie is going to win the rookie of the year, but I think that you're going to be able to get better numbers on all of them 
at different times in the season. And right now, plus 1,000, I think that might be the best that you get Mac Jones because these are numbers without him expecting him to yeah. start the season. So I'm not point. so sold on Mac Jones just based on what I've seen this preseason, Ben. I don't know if I really would like that bet so much. And I also don't see them over that nine and a half threshold for wins here either. Um, yeah. I think you're going to have Cam Newton be the quarterback. Like you said, let's put some respect on his name earlier in the podcast. And I think with the two uh, tight end thing that, you know, Belichick likes to run, I can see some success, but not enough so, to get him over that nine and a half hump. Uh, before I get going, thank you for stopping me reading that. I was on my Ron Burgundy just reading off the, the teleprompter <laughs> before reading I noticed what was going on. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, uh, I wanted to ask you, Justin, how – do you think Cam Newton's going to hold on to the job the whole year? Or? Dude, just, just based on what I've seen preseason, because I did uh, – What did you see game. that you didn't like? I, mean, I didn't see I, any arm strength. He didn't he have – He was over 50% a, completion. Well, he didn't have say, a pass attempt past 10 yards. Everything was under. So I, I just don't Mac think Jones, that's, Mac that's Jones enough finish from what season. I saw. One game. Mac, I think Mac Jones is going to finish the season as a starter. I think there's a case for him possibly coming in in the first half of the season – depending how this gets going. And that's why I agree with you, though, Justin, that that nine and a half is going to be hard for them to attain because if they do go to Mac Jones, it's because there has been some struggle there. The only thing that is hard for me to grasp and to bet against the Patriots is the fact that they do have that strong defense that was affected last year by all the guys that decided to sit out because of COVID. And then they went ahead and added more defense. I know I, I screwed up the additions down here, but they did add Matt Judon uh, from the, the Ravens, who's a, a big addition uh, for that team uh, to what was already a strong defense. They have a top five offensive line that everybody likes to reference when talking about the Patriots. For me, it just comes down to the quarterback play and whether or not the skill positions are going to come through. And the latter is why I'm off of the Patriots. I don't trust their skill position players. Um, I, I don't have faith in any of their receivers. Maybe I'm going to be proven wrong. Uh, but that's why I believe, A, Mac Jones is going to finish the season as a starter. And I would take the Patriots under nine and a half um, right here. And, and looking at their bye week and it being so late in the season, you could also see maybe them playing that game where if they're not in contention, if, you know, for that wild card spot, Maybe they just have it in there to where, you know, we're going to Max Jones here. So week four, though, week four, do you think they throw the kitchen sink at Tom Brady? Like they just try everything they can to win that game against Tampa in Foxborough. Tom Brady after winning the Super Bowl. That was one game that I actually kind of gave them because I just think that uh, Belichick's going to do everything in his power. Like he's going to probably get the best game plan of his life. Not you gave him that win right there? Yeah, but I'm still a little off on them, and that's me being generous, is what I'm saying. Like I, I, I have them, I, I have them at eight or, I have them at eight or nine wins. I also don't see them over, but I mean, I am a little more optimistic on Mac Jones, and if he gets in there, you know, earlier, you got the Jets, you got the Texans, you, you have winnable games in there. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm just watching the Patriots this year, to be honest. Um, let's see how quick they can rebuild. Because they yeah. went out and spent the money, and like if this was going to be a one year rebuild, um, it all so comes down see. to the quarterback showdown, no matter what. Here, and I just don't have enough data for Mac Jones, that's the only reason yeah. why I'm not sold yet. So then, but it does seem like you are a little more sold than I am. Do you see a little bit of um Rob Gronkowski and Aaron Hernandez vibes here on the field? Um, for uh, John Smith and Hunter Henry, do you like that combo? Them going out and spending the money on the tight ends, you, you didn't see that. It's they're obvious the only that's what they're trying that. to replicate. Yeah, that's it. Like Justin said, it's obvious that's what they're going for, and those are two guys who can make those plays. Hunter Henry went healthy, that guy is hit with the injury bug like hell. Um, but John Smith is a hell of a player. They're saying he's getting uh carries out of the backfield as well, so. Uh -huh. Uh, yeah, the training camp, they're saying he's getting carries as well. So that that's definitely what they're going for. They're not going to be a hit you over the top, even though they did add Nelson Aguilar uh, mm. this offseason, right? They added Nelson yes. Aguilar, I'm pretty sure. And he, he had a hell of a season. Addition. Yeah, he, he had, had a hell of a season with the Raiders. He, he shouldn't be your best receiver, though, is, is my argument. He should argument. not be and, your and best receiver. Oh, wait, but they clearly went all in on tight ends. With the tight ends, they're gonna exactly. Yeah, they're yeah, going to play yeah. inside out. Yeah, and Cam point. Newton, Cam Newton has shown success when having really good tight ends 
uh, Greg Olson, you know, guys that he can trust in underneath. Very true. We've seen we've seen that you know maybe his arm isn't doing those you know 15 yard outs, 20 yard outs anymore. But if he can hit the tight end, you know, 10 yards and in, they might be able to be effective running the ball. I expect them to be an unders team this year. To be honest, I expect them to play slow, try to control the tempo. We got that um, line. Yeah, interested interested in the Patriots this season for sure. All righty. Well, if, if you guys are interested in taking bets, we're all pretty high on their under. Um, in, in terms of the nine and a half, I think it's going to be hard to get there. Um, so, yeah, that's one thing to look out for. But uh, before we move off of the Patriots, Ben, what do, you li- what do you like out of these guys for fantasy, man? Are you drafting anybody here? Well, let's let's just go like process of elimination here and see where we gain some damn interest. Because that quarterback, I mean, we're not taking Cam, are we? No. No. So the quarterback is where you're looking at. It's and well, running back, uh, they do have Harris. Uh, first name is escaping me right now. Damian Harris. Damian Harris. Damian Harris. Another Alabama. Another Alabama. And they kind of, they kind of have, they kind of have said that they're gonna, <laughs> you know, stick to him. We know that you really can't trust the Patriots backfield just because it's always been by committee. But Rex Burkhead isn't on the roster anymore, so I think He's we're gone. safe from that shit. Yeah, we're safe from that. I do have a little bit of interest in Harris, especially if I am going. You know, zero running back in a fantasy draft. He could be a guy who I can plug in at RB two uh, throughout the season and just hope for the best. To be honest, he averaged five yards last last season. Yeah, yeah, he just he just needs to be the guy. And like, the word out of camp, it is his job. That's what. Yeah, I'm but Belichick plays those games, bro. Yeah. He plays those games at wide receiver. Nelson Aguilar, maybe a guy you could stash on your bench. Are y'all interested at all? No, no interest. On, Can't sell me on him. Sorry, because because of him or because of Cam's ability to hit players downfield. Or both. Both. both, add them both. Okay. Even just him, but add, add that extra factor. Why not? Okay. And tight ends. Are you going? Uh, which one do you favor, Henry, Johnny. Harry, Henry, or Johnny? Johnny Smith, just because of where you can get him. I think he's still going after Hunter Henry in most drafts that I've seen. What are your expectations? Shoot, I can see. I mean, I don't have his stats pulled up here, so before I say anything that's out of turn, I, I mean, I can see him. He had a hell of a season, though. Um, a top ten, a tight end. I mean, he's going to be like a you know, there's ten teams in the league. He's going to be tight end one, is is what I'm trying to say. I have yeah, expectations right, right, right. for that for him. He's going to be a guy that you want to start if, if yeah. you're in a ten team league. He's and especially a- you hit on it, Hunter Henry. Though I know they want to pair them together. But Hunter Henry does have that injury bug, and he already does have a little bit of an ailment um, and count mm-hmm. going on. So uh, John Smith is only going to benefit from that. Um, I'm looking at his stats here. Uh, shoot, last year, last well, am I looking at this correctly? Hold on. Well, you guys go ahead. But yeah, I like John Smith. I like John Smith as well. Um, I don't think that I'm drafting a, a tight end. I'm, I kind of have a game plan of where I want to go with tight end. Um, and I think it's a position that I want to take care of earlier in the draft rather than punting. Yeah, he's a punt guy, yeah. Because I think the drop off is pretty far, but I mean he has a he has a pretty high ceiling, but the floor is also, you know, kind of low. And based on their quarterback situation, I'm just not interested. But it is the most interesting fantasy football position on their on their uh, team. That's all I got for their fantasy. Alrighty. What about defense on the defense side of the ball? Is that a defense you draft? It, it is. I think it could be a defense that you draft because you play the Thanks. Jets twice a year. So, I mean, exactly. you know what I mean? You're going to want to play. And even against the Dolphins, you could see those low-scoring games. Yeah. I said that the Bills could lose that game 17-14 or 14-10 to the Patriots late in the year. Um, they, they play in a tough environment. Foxborough is always a tough environment, especially yep. once it gets cold. So they have a lot of players returning. And you know Belichick coaches up a good defense. They're, they're going to have yeah, a good yeah. defense. It's just is the offense going to turn the ball over in spots that puts them, you know. I'll say, I'll say this much, and not to completely um, take a dump on the Patriots. If they start the season off good, because they do have some winnable games in the beginning of their season before they, yeah. they hit Tampa. If they start the well, beginning of their season off good. They could be 2-0. Good, and oh, shit. Um, they could be 3-0. and oh. They get New Orleans at home. Who knows what the Saints are going to look like this year. True. Um, the middle of the season is what has me off of them on the playoffs because the middle of the season for them is pretty tough before they do get to that bye week. And even when they come off of that bye week, they're welcomed by Indy and Buffalo. So that, that's what I'm saying. They get off to a good start. But they have to. It's not a guarantee. But if they do do that, that's their best chance of making the playoffs. Yeah, and, you know, they do play some of the weaker divisions. They play the AFC South, which, I mean, you're going to play the Texans. You're going to play the Jags. 
Um, I mean, we know the Titans are a powerhouse, but there's still a lot of question marks against the Colts. So they did get it good there. And then when you go, you're playing, you know, the Falcons, you're playing the Panthers, yeah. you're playing the Saints. The Bucks is the only for sure one. So I do think that they got a pretty good draw as far as your schedule. I don't know if you – I don't want to put you on the spot, but you said the – the Bills have the 23rd ranked schedule. I think that they have to be around the same, right? Because they're in the same division. Yeah, so they the gotta... same division, same matchups. And the Patriots, their schedule, if I'm looking it's... at it, comes in at 19th. Yeah, so it's got to be right in that area. I, yeah. I'm I'm optimistic about the Patriots, honestly. They have, Bill Belichick has a lot to prove, so I'm optimistic about it. Okay. All right. So that's the Patriots. Well, what, well one more thing. Do you have them finishing above the Dolphins? In second place. That's a good question right there. Do we have them finishing above the Dolphins? Man, that would be a big time failure season for the Dolphins, but I'm going to say yes. Justin? I have more faith in Bill Belichick, yeah. Dang. I think I'm going to agree with you guys, too. I think uh, That's they're going to get second place. So we'll see what happens with uh, both of these teams. going to be an interesting division in terms of Shit, second so, and third so place. I, sure. And uh, didn't uh, no, they didn't split with the Bills, right? It was the Dolphins that split with the Bills. I was gonna say because no, the, the, the Bills swept the division. They won six and zero. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. So no, no Patriots to win the division. No value in that. But the Patriots should be competitive. Yeah, and fighting for a wild card for sure. Five hundred ish. The, the well, you can't go five hundred, yeah. right? But. This team was nowhere near five hundred when you were able to go five hundred uh, last uh. year. Uh, this that's none other than the the Jets, 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 as you see there on the J E T S. Uh, so the New York okay. Jets finished fourth place. Uh, their 2020 record uh, was two and fourteen. Uh, the Adam Gase special, uh, one yeah. and seven at home, one and seven on the road. They got swept by the division, got last place. They lost their first thirteen games before winning a game. And they weren't close. You know, we talk about these close games. Uh, their stat here is their average loss or their average margin of loss was approximately 13 games. They lost eight games by more than 14 points. Um, they had five close games, and they were two and three um, in those touchdown uh, or less games. Um, their 2021 notable props, and most of these are just up here for fun, is uh, the plus 12,500 to win the Super Bowl plus 5,000 to win the AFC championship. Uh, their season total is over under six, uh, minus 115 is a juice on that. Uh, to win the AFC East, they're plus 2,000. Uh, to make the playoffs as juiced to the no, it's a minus 700, and they're plus 450 to make the playoffs. Best odds on the table here, there's a rookie of the year. Their number two pick uh, is Zach Wilson. Um, he, he was the big addition along with Robert Salah, or Salah. I don't know how you pronounce his last yeah, name. Salah. Yeah. Salah. Uh, he was a defensive coordinator over in San Francisco with the 49ers. Uh, they did add Carl Lawson to just got some news before the pod. He did tear his Achilles in practice today. A uh, big loss for them. Hopefully he's able to come back speedy recovery, uh, to Carl Lawson. They also added, uh, LaMarcus Joyner, a safety they did add Corey Davis, who the Titans let go. Um, they added Keelan Cole from the Jags. Uh, their big draft pick, as we talked about, uh, was Zach Wilson. Um, and then they also added Elijah Moore, who's getting a lot of talks um, as being a potential uh, fantasy guy. And we might talk about him a little bit more, uh, the wide receiver out of Ole Miss. Uh, the key departures, we just talked about Zach Wilson. They did um, trade Sam Darnold over to the Panthers. Uh, they lost Rashad Perriman uh, to the Lions. And that's about it in terms of notable names. And Pat Eflin, they lost him also to the Panthers. I think he might have been – no, he he followed Sam Darnold and signed over there. Anyways. Uh, wow. Oh. Yeah, he followed Sam Darnold. What fucking uh, loyalty. Mm -hmm. uh, their strength of schedule, um, it, it's in the middle of the road. Uh, they, they do have a couple of uh, easier games, I guess, in the first half of the season with an early bye week. Um, and in week six, and then after that, um, it's pretty tough for them uh, towards the end of the season. I don't have them getting to the uh, the season total of six, but before the before the pod, Justin was talking about uh, some chatter from Jets people. Uh, well, what do you think about the Jets, Justin? What's your intel telling you? Um, what are those Jets? Jets just saying? What are the homers saying? So I'm just gonna, you know, 
I don't want to drag this one out. It's the Jets. <laughs> under under six, I have them at four wins at best. Their best addition is not even a player. It's Robert Salah, the coach. That tells you everything. I'm not going to buy in on Zach Wilson. I saw some of those BYU games. He made a lot of questionable throws that he didn't have to pay for, but this is the NFL. You're going to pay on some of those throws. I see it happening again. I'm not sold on him at all. So you're seeing the Jets with a new quarterback in a couple of years again? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a new quarter? Damn, so he's a bust. You're labeling Zach Wilson a bust is what you're doing here on this podcast right I'll, now? I'll, I'll take a bet if someone wants to bet this one. I mean, well, I'm, I'm what's not the bet? Well, well, what would be the bet, though? Whatever I, I, you want. You know, I've said that going and getting you know a good number on all these rookie quarterbacks for rookie of the year is a good idea. This is the one that I wouldn't do it on, and I was a fan of Wilson at BYU. But the team is just not good, man. Like you, I agree. The best addition is the head coach. Because I think that his mentality and his attitude can yeah, culture. just yeah, yeah it, it can get a culture to that team, but they're too young to do anything right now. Um, I have no belief in the Jets at all. I do like Zach Wilson, and I thought that he looked all right that preseason game. I know it was you know several drives, but I thought that he looked decent. But I, I just expect nothing from this team at all. I don't, like, how many wins would it take? For Zach Wilson, rookie of the year, to be in the mix, how many wins do the Jets need? He would Seven need to be around that six, that that season win total. Um, but he has to be more because I expect Mac Jones, if he's going to be the guy y'all say he is, to have more wins there's than a six. Lot, there's a lot more competition this year than there was last year, for, uh, for sure, as far as quarterbacks go. Um, but I'm not interested in Zach Wilson, rookie of the year, at all. And that's because he's a guy that you're guaranteed to have starting – right off the bat week one yep. but i mean it, it, it could he could just be seeing ghosts just like darnold was. <laughs> exactly you know what man. i mean and you know i want to say something to that I, I i think ben you have a point is that the team is just so bad around them uh that they really don't have a fighting chance man and, and that's a, the one thing i do want to say is sam darnold i mean not a lot of guys can succeed in that environment the, the what he was thrown into those few years that mm-hmm. he was there uh, with the Jets. I mean, he was rushed on about a third of his passes and, last year. And, and so, that's because uh, he was under a shittier regime, too, Roland. Yeah. That coach was a fucking lunatic. A- exactly. Now, this is crazy. Exactly. Yeah, like, like, Not a like, lot of guys. And he got mono, too. You throw that in there. I mean, how are you going to survive with that, man? How are you going to survive? Yeah. It, it's tough. But Sam Darnold, I, he didn't find success. I'm not going to go as far as Justin to say that uh, Wilson's going to be a bust because I do like his natural arm talent. I do see why they took him at number two i wasn't one of those guys i had justin fields as my number two uh quarterback but the arm talent pops off uh, the tape when you watch it and and that's what they they want to see um with those number two picks especially because he he got that comparison to to mahomes that seemed to stuck with him stick with him uh throughout the, the draft process we'll but, see how long um, just yeah. the biggest problem though for him regardless though he's on the jets yeah, he's on the Jets. That's a big problem for him, for sure. And Justin, I think you do bring up a good point. At BYU, his numbers were not that impressive. Uh, he had really his last year where he blew up. But anyways, um, enough of the Jets. I don't think there's really anything that we're confident about giving out in, in terms of a bet here. But that doesn't mean that there might not be some fantasy value. But so it for the might last mean time, that there's not fantasy value, Roland. Well, I mean, what's like going on here? I'm, I'm thinking Jamison Crowder. He's still on the team, correct or no? Yeah, he's still on the team. Uh, at, receiver, slot guy. At, at receiver, you have Jamison Crowder. You have Sims, who you know flashed. I guess at times you could say last year, nothing special. Corey um, Davis. This, uh, Corey Davis, who they added, not interested either. Bro, I want nothing to do with do this. Do you like Elijah team, Moore? Bro. Elijah Moore in the later round. I don't like anybody, Roland. I don't want anything to do. Don't associate. Don't put Ben and Jets in the same sentence ever. That I I want nothing to do with this team, bro, at all. What about you, I Justin? Won't, I won't watch any of this. Any of the I, games. Like I said, I don't want to drag it out. I, I want to be disrespectful. I don't care for the Jets at all this season. I don't think anything but just their head coach. I think maybe the the start of something good for them, but it's not going to be done this year. Uh, they I think maybe with him they can trend up. Just not, not, not this year. Right. They need a couple more first round, uh, a couple more top ten picks uh, to help them out, right? So, uh, yeah. Anyways, that was the because I, even, oh, go ahead, even even with their defense rolling, like like there's nothing with the defense. Like you could be a 
crappy offensive team and at least have a defense that you could kind of fall back on and, you know, will alleviate some of the damage when with those turnovers. But the defense is trash too, man. We've seen them draft first-rounders and trade them out of there two years after drafting them. Happened with the USC defensive yeah. lineman that they drafted. Happened with the safety that the Seahawks just signed to that huge deal, Adams. Mm-hmm. The, the the franchise just it, – it's trash. It's trash. Well, I, I think Justin might be onto something. I think signing Robert Sala or Sala, I can't pronounce his name right now. It's, it doesn't seem to be that hard, but I'm having trouble. Uh, I think adding him is a step in the right direction. If he's given the proper opportunity to succeed, um, I, I think he has them um, on the right track, just not this year. Uh, so, yeah, that wraps it up, though, for the AFC East. Uh, that was our breakdown. I think we're all high on the bills here. Uh, we did give out a couple board. of bets. Uh, the bills yeah. over 11. Um, I think we're all pretty confident in the the Patriots under nine and a half. Um, is there anything else that you guys want to give out in terms of a bet uh, before we we wrap up the AFC East? No, that's all I got. I mean, like I said, Mac Jones possibly for rookie of the year. Yeah. If he doesn't start the season, you probably get better odds than plus one thousand. But um, him, I'm, him, Lance, and and Kamara for the Jags is who I'm looking for for Lawrence, offensive yeah. rookie of the year. Yeah. Yes, yeah, especially after they cut um, Tim Tebow, doesn't have to worry about him coming from behind his back anymore. Right. Uh, yeah. But we already covered the AFC South. Uh, we just wrapped up the AFC East. Uh, that was uh, our fiftieth episode, guys. Uh, con- con- congratulations again. Uh, yeah. He's oh. a pretty big milestone. Hopefully, we can hit fifty more um, and get to a hundred. That'd be pretty cool. We will. Pal, that we we will. did that. Um, and then you know, next week we're going to be getting back into the NFC. Um, I think we've all agreed we're going to save the Cowboys for the last uh, the, the last divisional breakdown. So yeah, you know, the, the culmination of the Hard Knocks yeah. episodes into yeah, that. Exactly. So I think next my vote live on air uh, would be for uh, the the NFC South. Uh, go ahead and break down right, the defending right channels. Right on. All right. All right. Yeah, that that wraps up all the AFC. So let's finish up the NFC. We got three divisions left. I think we got. Two weeks of football left, so we're gonna have to get two of these out in one in one week. But I'm I'm excited, man. We're we're throwing out these futures plays. I'm excited to track them throughout the year. Hell yeah! And as always, you guys can get those bets in at, at BetKing online. Use the code WTBS when you're depositing. And as uh, Ben and Justin talked about earlier, they they are having that Survivor Pool uh, contest. Uh, so make sure to hit them up on Twitter to get more details on that contest. But um, as far as we talking about sports is concerned. Uh, that wraps it up for us. Uh, what, what just the the fantasy football league hit up Justin. Justin will be the commissioner. He's not playing. He is, com- he is going full Roger Goodell and just being the commissioner. Um, Damn. so vetoing all of Ben's trades. Justin is going to be yeah. Justin's going to be sending out invites. Uh, he already has a list of the people who are on. If y'all are listening to this, the fantasy football league is free. Winner gets a jersey. Damn. Marky got that Rams jersey last year. So if y'all want in. Hit us up or hit Justin up on Facebook and Twitter. Yeah. End of an era. End of an era. Just, uh, ben, as the commissioner, we don't have to worry about the commissioner getting the number one pick this year. I'm glad to hear this move is being made. The, collision, the collusion is over. <laughs> the collusion is over. I'm sure there's a lot of people who will be happy about this news, for sure. All, All right, right buddy. Peace, guys. That's it. Later. I'm supposed to be the franchise player, and we're in here talking about practice. I mean, listen, we talking about practice. Not a game, not a game, not a game. We talking about practice. Yes. Not a Smoke game, not a game. Me. Bam, bam. Me, man. Not a game. Slap that place, she scored 30. What are we even talking about, man? We talking about sports here.